All right. <clears throat> can you all hear me and can you hear me well? Um, I was working late, so I couldn't do like the makeup for my vampire. I was going to give you vampire, but the people are over here with the makeup, my fangs, um, they're supposed to be silver, but they never came. <laughs> they... <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they never, they never came. So I'm gonna have to make do um, tonight. Um, interview with the vampire was the thing. If you haven't seen it, you should because it is what it is. Um, hit that eight count. Period. Thank you, April. You've been a member for eight months. So. First of all, let me say, you can accuse me of all the things you know that you were guilty of. And I see that it is easy for you to blame everything on me. If that's... All right. <clears throat> so I am annoyed at myself a little bit. There we go. I'm annoyed at myself a little bit. And the reason I'm annoyed at myself is... um. One, I can see. I have my glasses, but I have to give you guys a full effect. So until we get into the, the actual show, I will not be putting on my glasses. Right now, I'm giving... <laughs> I'm not about to give nerd. I am not about to give nerd right now. <clears throat> welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Thema Thoth. Grab your coffee, water, tea, whatever you're drinking. Go and get that. Tonight we are going to be having a very serious discussion. And I will open the panel up. I have um, a costume party to go to at some point tonight. So um, I even have earring. I don't wear earrings. <laughs> Wait, someone said Captain. Oh, no, it's supposed to give vampire account. Uh, I failed. Anywho. It is what it is. Um, <clears throat> let's get into it. Oh, I have something that I wanted to show you all before um, before I get into the actual video. There are two things, two random video. Um, the skin is skinning, period. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm going to start sweating in a minute. In a minute. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Watch this with me. I'm going to talk to you about why no one cares about you. Fellas, the sooner you realize this, that no one cares about you, the better off you're going to be. This is why you must do the work within yourself so that you can build up a strong mentality and a strong frame to withstand all the negative energy that's going to come your way throughout life so that you can deal with the reality that life is fleeting and no one is coming to save you. And the only way that you're gonna be able to live a meaningful life is when you start getting after shit and you start going after things and you start to become a beast in your own life. And you start taking action and holding yourself accountable because fellas, nobody else is gonna do these things for you. Uh, but Shad, uh, my Bobby cares about me. And uh, so does my girlfriend. So you're just wrong. You're wrong, Sean. I don't believe you on this one. Nope. I'm not believing it. I don't believe you. I got plenty of people who care about me. And we go out to fancy dinners. And they pat me on the back and tell me it's going to be okay. So you have no idea what you're talking about. I'm going to dislike this video. 
You're an asshole, Shad. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, Steve, that's how you feel? Okay, well, what you don't realize is that because of your ignorance and lack of experience, that your girlfriend, oh, she could walk out that door and she could leave you at any moment. And yeah, sure, your mommy does love you. But at the end of the day, she has her own shit going on. And she's living her own life. And she's not going to get up and take any action for you. Of course, she's going to love you and pat you and rub you on the head and tell you it's going to be okay. But she's not going to make anything happen in your life, sir. So what do people actually care about? People actually care about their own lives. They care about their own goals. Their I was attempting to hold a straight face as I watched that because one, that would apply to everyone. And the idea, this is me coddling a little bit, but the idea that no one cares about you is such a sad reality. <laughs> the, the, the idea that no one cares about you is a sad reality. Like we're going to get into, in a minute, um, we're going to get into the the quote unquote lonely man epidemic and what it's ha what is happening and how people online I might not get into this part how people online are attempting to sort of capitalize off um, to sign off on some of the issues so I'm gonna um, play a little bit more because I, I I think he's funny. Not for the reasons he thinks he's funny, and then I'll come. Their own dreams, their own issues, their own pain, their own suffering, their own insecurities, and their own ambitions. And fellas, there's nothing wrong with people living in this way. This is to be expected. This is part of the human experience. Sure, as human beings, we can all care about one another, but most of that caring is from afar because when shit really hits the fan, who's gonna actually be there for you? Who's gonna be on the front lines with you, fighting with you, fighting for you, believing in you? I can guarantee you it's not gonna be many. It's not gonna be many, fellas. I know that may be tough to hear and you think your little girlfriend is going to be there for you because she gives you little cuddles at night. Well, fuck that. I'm here to tell you that she will be the first one to turn on you when shit hits the fan. I promise you. So you can keep going on and believe in that. This woman is your everything and she's going to support you till, till death do you part. But OK, we'll see. You gotta keep me posted. The first time some shit goes wrong, let me know how long she stays. Because at the end of the day, she's not gonna care. No one does. It's up to you to make shit happen. It's up to you to hold yourself accountable. It's up to you to better your life. Not sitting there crying in your girl's arms. when something goes wrong. The things that you wanna accomplish are completely up to you. And you cannot be shocked and please don't be surprised when the people you thought were gonna support you don't support you. Now, if you have enough life experience, you understand that people will turn their back on you in an instant. People who you never expected and never thought would treat you in this way. They will drop you with the quickness and they won't reach out to check on you. They won't see how you're doing. And then the next time you see these individuals, guess what they're gonna do? Oh, they're gonna act like everything is cool. They're gonna act like, like they missed you. They're gonna act like they care. But fellas, do you hear the key word that I said there? Act. It's all acting. So he's selling nihilism, obviously, 
Hey, Sobo Bobo, how are you? We've missed you. You are, by the way, the longest, um, you are, you've been a member for the longest on the channel. So um, thank you. I appreciate that. We've definitely, definitely missed you. So um, I want to play all of this, but I feel like people are bored. The reason I want to do this is a bunch of things can be true at once. And my problem is, as a general matter, I think that um, content creators, men specifically, have um, leaned very heavily into uh, sort of nihilism as a product for the rest of the male population watching them because that's how they sell to people. Um, So I am not quite sure why they've taken this this route, but um, I don't know. It it, it feels um, it feels very odd. People are messaging me. I apologize. Um, it it feels odd to me that there is this is a commodity now that. Doom and gloom is a commodity. Like people care about you, and to the extent there isn't a group of people rallying around you all the time, making sure you're always okay, that you have to get up and go do things yourself, that would apply to literally everyone. Like literally everyone. So I'm going to let it play out um, and then we'll come back because I'm not going to talk in depth about what is happening here. Um, I just need y'all to watch it so that we can get some context for the PowerPoint coming up. <laughs> Not the PowerPoint coming up. Because 95% of these people are fake as fuck. They're fake. And I can almost guarantee you these same people who didn't believe in you and who didn't support you and who didn't care about you when you ultimately see them again because fellas i'm telling you right now you will be back in the same room with these individuals again when you see them again oh their eyes are going to be wide open and they're going to be shocked because they know that they turn their back on you But these people are so fake and so foul that they're going to do everything they can to try to get back in your good graces. But guess what? Nah, fuck you. You didn't care about me when I was down. Also, no, I stopped caring about you as well. And that's how a real one does it. Fellas, I've been telling you all on many past videos that real ones are rare. Real ones are rare. There's only going to be a few of them in your life. And I've always been a real one. And so I can see right through these fake motherfuckers. And these people know who they are. But at the end of the day, you can't even be mad at these people. Snakes always expose themselves eventually. And even in the back of your mind, you kind of already knew that these individuals were snaky and slimy and slithery. You already kind of knew that if shit, if shit hit the fan, these weren't real friends. These weren't people who actually cared about you. But you, you tried to give them the benefit of the doubt. You thought, well, maybe, maybe they are. Maybe, they, maybe there's a, an inch, a speck of realness within them. There ain't. There ain't. But again, you can't be mad. You just got to let it go and realize this is human nature. 
And this is why you have to go into it with the understanding that nobody cares about you. Nobody. This is why you must care about yourself. This is why I'm constantly preaching to you guys about being selfish and about not worrying about what other people are doing, saying, or thinking. Because most of these individuals in the long run will have no meaning in your life other than to teach you and show you about human nature. And this is one of the biggest lessons you can learn, fellas, especially if you're a young guy and you're watching this, is understanding that nobody cares. And all this to say that you have to be prepared for the many challenges that you are going to face over the course of your life. And you have to do so with the understanding that you will be betrayed and you will have to do it alone. Y'all not going to tell me this is not a problem. Y'all are not going to tell me this. Is, how are you? Like, how, <laughs> how do you look at the camera? I'm watching your comments. How do you look at the camera? How do you look at the camera and say, if there are any young men watching, please know no one cares about you. Nothing is going to happen for you. It's not great. Life is terrible. How do you do that? Like, actually, I hate this. This is jingling. Let me remove that. I don't like a magnet. <laughs> How do you do that? How is this okay? I understand wanting to connect to someone's sadness and sort of amplifying the, the idea that you are not alone, right? I understand that. This is not that. This is actually telling someone who might be sad, right? When we are sad, we tend to um, catastrophize a lot. We tend to think the world is against us. We, th we tend to not really be thinking about that which we have that, that is positive, just focusing on the negative. So when you go online to reaffirm some of your sadness and you hear this, it is not just saying you are justified and the sadness is understandable. It's saying not only is the sadness understandable, there is no hope, there won't be no hope. <laughs> Look, it's not funny, but it's like, how do you sit up there and say that to, to a group of people who might actually be looking to, if, looking to you for help? Like, actually... Think about this for like a couple seconds. Imagine your child, a son, is going through a breakup and slam the door, lock himself in the room, and you go hear him listening to them. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna go put you on a watch list immediately. Like, like immediately. What do you mean? So let me read some of these comments. Like, there's a part of me, and I'm not asking you all to. Like, I feel bad for men who might actually be in, like, deep sadness because of a breakup or something, and they go online and get sucked into this kind of foolishness. Like, this is ridiculous. In any case, let me read. Hit that eight count. That lady has been doing that dance for, like, a year, and every dance is the exact same. You know how you watch Blue Ivy get progressively better, right? This woman just stayed the same the entire time. <clears throat> it's my fave time of year. Same. I do like Halloween. I wish I had my my silver fangs to put in, but I don't. Thank you. Um, Nally's World says, come through vampire realness and skin looking good. Period. Thank you. Um, Thema, stop flirting with me. I'm taking cover. And <laughs> period. Period. It's funny. This mole right here, my mom, myself, and my brother all have it. Like, we all have it. My dad don't got it, but <laughs> that would be weird. But we all have it. I don't know. I thought I, I actually find that really fascinating. 
Uh, he literally made a video to trauma bond with other men. Is he trying to be entertained? Is he telling men to turn to him? Is he grooming? I think he's telling men to turn to each. Look, well, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, it's the acting for me. I don't like. I don't like bad acting. If you're gonna act, you need to put some oomph in it. Uh, thank you, divine diva. Captain Pepper, oh, Captain Pepper became a member. Thank you. And finally, before we get into the video, he sounded very angry and bitter. Whew, child, Lord, take the wheel, please. He clearly been abandoned most of his life and targeting the youth. I don't think he has. I think most of the people who engage in this content know they're lying. And they know people care about them. And to the extent people don't care about them in the way he's saying I don't think that is new. All right. Let's finish it then. And people will turn their back on you and you will have to face that suffering head on and that heartbreak and that injustice all while at the same time understanding that nobody cares. People may care about what happened to you for a day or two, and then it's gone out of their mind, and they go back to living their, their same old regular lives. Some of these people, they very well may wish you well once, and then you never hear from them again. Some may never reach out to you at all, even the ones you expected to. But at the end of the day, it just goes to show that most individuals cannot be trusted. And you have to use discernment and you have to use your best judgment and you have to use your past experience and let it guide you. But in the end, you must be okay if everyone in this world was to turn on you, you must be okay with doing things yourself and keeping a strong mind. And understanding that the way you think, the quality of your thoughts is what's gonna help you continue to be productive and live a quality life. Even though the outside world around you is chaos. But guess what? Those of us who are mentally tough, those of us who are strong thinkers, those of us who live with an excellent character and morals and code, we understand that things will always work in our favor and things will always work out well for us because we're winners. So even if fellas, even if nobody is there for you, even if nobody cares for you, stay strong, stay diligent, put the work in, be confident, know who you are. And I promise you, you will have the last laugh. So remember fellas, you are the prize. Continue to work on yourself day in day out and fellas if you found any value in this video remember to like comment subscribe hit that bell notification and fellas i'll see you all in the next video peace i feel like i want to drop the link early but i don't want this to be like too chaotic before i get into this so i am not going to drop the link early which i want to do <laughs> Bibi, who hurt you? <laughs> 11 months, thank you. Um, so the one thing the one thing that I wish people did, instead of like throwing the issues out there on the world, um, is say, I know we are hurting. I understand we're hurting. Here is how we can heal together. 
here is what you need to do. Here's the therapist number. Here are some organizations you can go to to engage in like meaningful therapy. Like, I wish that was the conversation, even if you're not giving much of a feedback, but to tell someone that no one cares about them and that it won't change and this is life and being a man means you're going to be alone and um, your girlfriend is going to leave you, your mom don't really love you, your family don't care about you. It's like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, this is bad advice. <laughs> we don't have to dig too deep to know that this is bad advice. but. I'm going to leave this alone because that's only priming you all for the discussion we're going to have and why I believe the idea that the single man, lonely man epidemic that is taking place at least, if not in reality, in social media reality and online and in the news, I believe it is done to guilt women into sacrificing themselves at the altar of men. Because there is no reason you should be talking to women about men's loneliness. If, in fact, you believe men are lonely, then you need to figure out a way how men can get together with other men. Wasn't Kevin Samuels advocating for men to be with men? Not, not obviously in that way, but I'm laughing. I'm laughing, but I promise I don't actually. <laughs> I don't... I don't. <laughs> How are they the prize and nobody gives? <laughs> Look, we going to find out today. We are on a mission today to find out. When I drop the link, y'all can come up. Pregnant moth, <laughs> the beige moth. Not y'all doing beige. The teleprompter wasn't moving fast enough. It's also giving balding <laughs> Right. It's giving phantom follicles. <laughs> it's definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely. <laughs> I need to stop. <clears throat> Beige color manifesto is giving all my life. I had to fight. You is important, manga up king. Manga's up king. <clears throat> I hate this for me. I I hate this for us. Let me check something real quick because while I'm on here, everything is in chaos. <laughs> everything is in chaos. All right. Before we get in, I need to show you something that I thought was beautiful. Let me let me show you all this. <clears throat> Think of the, the, well, they're not really young kids, but young performers that are out there now. So many of them who idolized you on the way up, like um, Brittany and J-Lo and Jessica, those girls. Well, you know, I really do think that uh, a lot of them are going to have some longevity. Um, some I can see, like uh, I, the other night I was at the Carousel Ball, and I must say that I just had such admiration for Beyonce. Boy, what a what type she is. Beautiful, just beautiful, beautiful. And she was there with her mother, and I could see yeah. that she's got good foundation. Yeah. So I know that when I say have legs, she's going to be lasting and mm -hmm. be here. And those things are really important, that she seems to have the mentors necessary and the background with her parents there. And also, uh, Holly Berry was there, and she said wonderful things on the stage. I heard her say things. I don't know her very well, yeah. but she said beautiful things. So I know that there are some wonderful girls in the industry that are going to be here and make uh, What do you think of the... So no, these women sat up there, talk about what do you, what do you think about white person, white person, white person? <laughs> Diana Ross said, uh, yeah, that's cute, but beyond <laughs> where is, where is... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> they definitely said white people, white people, white people. And B Diana Ross was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right, all right. So let's talk about Beyonce. And I love that for her. I absolutely adore this response. This is how you respond to the foolishness. Yeah. 
they're going to give you all the options except me and say, ah, yeah, no, uh, I do not eat green eggs and ham. <sighs> There's one more thing. I, just, I was going to play this, but yeah, for this before we get into like the actual discussion, let, let's play this. Let me speed this up for you. <clears throat> I do not know these people do not go to these people and give them hate. Apparently, they're a smaller content creator, all of that stuff, all of that stuff. Let's watch. Power, brother. It is. <laughs> your, favorite, your favorite wide receiver, Tara Owens, right? Uh -huh. He said he grew up in a bad neighborhood. Yeah. And the black women used to make fun of him. Yeah. That trauma caused his grown man to not mess with no <laughs> black women for the rest of his life. Right, correct. Is it, but before you go too far, you think that's right? You think that's fair? With who? What's it, Terrell doing that? You know, exactly. man, trauma's for real, bro. You're right, you're right. If every time I open the door, a person with a uh, white shirt punches me in the face. <laughs> every morning, punches me in the face. Every, yeah. That means every time I see a person with a white shirt, I think I'm about to get punched <laughs> right, in the face. Right. <laughs> you know? Come on. Right. But, but that's the thing. Like, Terrell can do whatever he wants to do. He can have his preference because that's what people can do. And she has her own preference. She says she wants to reform hood niggas. Now, do hood niggas, I don't like, I don't like word. Do hood ninjas, do some hood ninjas keep money burning? Do they keep money? Do they got money? Flashy money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Do some hood hood ninjas wear flashy clothes? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Are women attracted to that kind of stuff? They are, they are. Will you think the women, those hood ninjas will have more babies? Yeah, for sure. With more babies, won't you think you have more drama? Yeah. So how is you go find a hood guy? They and, had no babies. And, and I think that's what she, she wants somebody that's flashy, that's, that's somebody that's attractive, that has that swag or whatever, but she doesn't want the hood issues that come with it, the, the drama. She don't want the baby mama. She don't want any of that kind of stuff. The law. She don't want that. She just wants somebody that has some of the qualities, the attractive qualities she's looking for. She don't want but, nobody, she don't want no nerve. Both. You can't have both, but that's what people want. They want both. They want somebody that's doing good. They 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 got their head on straight. They're making good decisions. They don't have a stack of money. It's in the bank. They don't have a, th a thousand dollar pair of shoes on just because they're they're doing different things. They're buying stocks. They're doing different things with their money. Now look at this, Brandon. I just I just noticed this. This young lady right here. Mm -hmm. What's her first thing on the top of the list? Right. Let's read it to me. Heal. Mm -hmm. What's the last two things at the bottom of this list? No trauma. <laughs> Baby mama drama. You think she faced a lot of had a lot of tax in relationships relationship. to say this? Yeah. All right. So these men don't even believe these men can change. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't care what they're talking about. What they're actually saying is they don't believe they can change. Now, I, being the hopeless, um, optimistic person that I am, do actually believe people can change. The, this woman went on Kentridge and she said she would like someone who is... Even if they're from the street, she does not want them to be off the street. She wants them, if she's dating someone, she would want them to be a better person than they were if they were on the streets, right? And that's whatever she likes or whatever, right? I'm not saying her preference is good or bad. Not making a judgment. These men are. They are laughing and they are saying that men can change. That if you want that man from the street, if he is from the street, he cannot be a reformed H O O D N word. They don't believe they can change. I don't know what you are doing, ma'am, or what people are doing, but once we start talking out loud that we can change, we also have a problem. Now, she said, they go on to say, how dare you want um, someone who is strong and masculine and aggressive or whatever, and also rich and educated and all of that. They don't believe you can be born. <laughs> These men really sit up here and they don't believe for a moment at all. And they're arguing that if you want someone who is smart and who has a job, then that person is not, uh, could not have been from the quote unquote streets. And if someone is from the streets, they can't have a job and be a good person. I didn't say any of this. They said it. And so what I'm thinking is these men don't believe people can change. They believe that you are just who you are, how you are, and nothing about you can ever change. I wish I had that look on life so I can just cut people off and move on. Because <laughs> they're not about to sit here and give her no credit. She said she wants someone who is healed. She said someone who is a staff. <laughs> I was trying to say it just now, but I can't. I have to say ninja. And I can't, I, if you're a hood ninja, I, can't, I don't even want to say that either. 
So I don't know. It, if you, but I am trying to figure out what is wrong with someone who is stable, family oriented, different viewpoint, no trauma, no baby mama drama. No, 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 I didn't say it. I was trying to say it, but I said ninja. <laughs> I, I just don't understand this. Yeah. I mean, that, that takes up 20%, 20 to 30%. But she, don't want it. but she says she wants a reform hood nigga. Do you think that's what she's actively looking for? Yeah. And she keeps getting it, but she still wants what's hurting her. There you go. So <laughs> what, 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 that doesn't make any sense to me. You want something that you know is not good for you, but when you get it, it hurts you and adds to your trauma, but you still want to try to make it work anyway, even though you, don't, you know it's not going to work. And she's 36 years old with two daughters. Mm. You remember I said the mom or... <laughs> I am. Um, I was like, should I try to say it? But I, I, I can't. I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. The teacher. So yeah. what is she teaching her daughters? To go after hood, hood ninjas, like you like to say. The, that's what I should be looking for. Those are the kind of people that have value to me. Those are the kind of men that I, that I think are valuable. Not the ones that's in school. Not the ones that are just doing good in the community. Not flashy. They just, they're just regular people. I don't, I don't want those. I want somebody that's done time. He's getting out. He's grinding. Whatever that means. That's, that's what, what I'm looking for. But let me, let me ask you, let's flip it the other way around. What if this was me? I'm, I'm 36 years old. I got two daughters. And I told Kendra. I'm All right. I'm done with them. They're boring. All right. So we're going to get into the show now. <clears throat> and I wanted to first, the Diana Ross thing was just there because I wanted it there. But I want to frame a conversation we're about to have around loneliness, the loneliness epidemic around men. Um, and then really think about sort of interactions that the media, while they don't say it overtly, is pushing on women. I think there is a very overt push to get women to settle for men because men are lonely. I think that is the underpinning of the entirety of the conversation. And it's not something that is said, but I think it's very overt. I, I don't think it's a covert like, oh, this is a sub note in the conversation that is far down on the list of things that we need. I think it's a very overt push about women's involvement in men's loneliness and you preventing men from being lonely. And I don't like it. And I don't like it at all. So because I don't like it, we're going to talk about it again in depth. We are. <clears throat> Du, na, 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 na. <laughs> <clears throat> so I wanted to start off this conversation with a PowerPoint because <laughs> what, what better way to start a conversation like this um, but with a PowerPoint, right? So let's do it. <clears throat> so the first thing first, um, I did a live stream that is not very important. And on that live stream, I found a comment by Mr. Vic P. And he said, I never hear any race of women speaking about independent like the black woman. Maybe that's part of the issue. Just maybe. Now, the issue was about whether or not um, it's hard for men and women to get along and date. And he thinks, and I won't go in on him because he's always here, he thinks that women saying they're independent is part of <laughs> Sorry, I promise, I promise I don't want to go in. I, I don't want to drag anyone. But he thinks that women saying that they're independent might be the issue. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very annoyed at something that just happened. Um, so anyway, this is where we are going to start. <clears throat> so let me put on my glasses because I don't know why I think that I can read any of this. <clears throat> okay. 
All right. <laughs> this is, this is, someone said drag him. I hate that. I, I feel like the glasses take... Oh, I'm annoyed. Let me, let me get annoyed quickly. I feel like the glasses take away from the, from the moment. I don't like that. I do not like that... <laughs> I don't like that the glasses take away from the woman. I'm really mad looking at. Sorry, I need to do something. Let me, let me, let me. <laughs> Sorry, you are going to hate me, but let me go to it. Let, let's play a commercial real quick because I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't like this. I should have um, made the words bigger now that I think about it. <clears throat> I'm not playing the winter is coming thing. No man should ha have to go through this. No man should have to endure the pain. Men are taken out their home every day. Innocent men just like this one. 60% divorce rate took men out of their homes. Home. The gender pay gap took this man out of his home. These men are facing homelessness right now. But with your support and just 50 cents a day, we can save them. Please go online or call this number and join the Save a King Fund for Humanity for only $15 a month. For just 50 cents a day, you'll deliver emergency relief, passport, and life-saving support to these men who could be homeless without it. Don't wait. Pick up the phone now. No man should have to go through this. No man should have to endure the pain. Men are taken out their home every day. Innocent men just like this one. 60% divorce rate took men out of their homes. College admission gender bias took this man out of his home. The gender pay gap took this man out of his home. These men are facing homelessness right now. But with your support and just 50 cents a day, we can save them. Please go online or call this number and join the Save a King Fund for Humanity for only $15 a month. For just 50 cents a day, you'll deliver emergency relief, passport, and life-saving support to these men who could be homeless without it. Don't wait. Pick up the phone now. No man should have to go through this. No man should have to endure the pain. Men are taken out their home every day. Innocent men just like this one. 60% divorce rate took men out of their homes. College admission gender bias took this man out of his home. The gender pay gap took this man out of his home. These men are facing homelessness right now. But with your support and just 50 cents a day, we can save them. Please go online or call this number and join the Save a King Fund for Humanity for only $15 a month. For just 50 cents a day, you'll deliver emergency relief, passport, and life-saving support to these men who could be homeless without it. Don't wait. Pick up the phone now.
I left and I came back and that was still playing because I didn't realize it wasn't on the screen. And I don't like that very much because I walked out of here and you saw my outfit. All right. So let's get into this um, PowerPoint and let's see what I said. <laughs> Wait, why is this not? Oh, there we go. All right. So there was a conversation happening online about the quote unquote lonely man epidemic. And it's really interesting to me that the way the conversation is framed, both in the black sector and quote unquote white sector, um, it, it feels really difficult that what happens for it feels really difficult to argue against the reality that men are going through a lot of things. And the question is, what should the society do about it? I don't think that's a bad question, mind you. I think that's an important and good question. Um, if men are going through something, whose responsibility is it to fix men? And what is that responsibility. We are going to watch two men talk about these responsibilities and hopefully hopefully you guys don't get too bored or annoyed with it. Note that I don't fully agree with what is being said, but I also think it is important that we hear it because I don't like I don't like the approach. And then I'm going to get into why it is so difficult to find empathy for a lot of people. I mean, y'all, most of you already know what I'm going to say around empathy. Um, it is difficult to find empathy for a group of people who are constantly online dragging and berating people. It's very difficult to find empathy for people when they don't see the problems that they are causing. It's very difficult, I think, to find empathy when people are being harmed. And so I don't ask people to find this kind of empathy and grace, but I do recognize that there is a conversation happening and I still have a problem with the conversation. And this is why I have the problem with the conversation happening. And here we go. I'm going to speed it up because everyone is boring me now. You know, when I look out at the internet today and you see this huge swell within men's work, within the manosphere, within Red Pill, you know, certain and that have just had a meteoric rise in, in many ways, it's because they're speaking to the, the sort of cultural underpinnings of what men are experiencing. You know, we're living through one of the first times, in my opinion, in almost all of history, all known history, where masculinity isn't getting defined by men. Right. Culturally, if you look at what makes a good man and what makes a, a man masculine, there's sort of this battle for being able to define it. And I think it was Yuval Harari um, in uh, Sapiens, where, or no, maybe it was Homo Deus, where he talks about how in the future, the wars will be fought within intersubjective reality, within the reality of story, within the reality of narrative. And I think that that's where a lot of the quote unquote gender wars is, are happening right now. It's within the realm of story and within the realm of narrative. And so anyway, that's a little existential, but to pull it back down to reality, I think you're right. There's, there's, this, there's this very big challenge that a lot of men feel, which is they're being told specifically by a lot of women to open up by society, by Instagram, by Facebook. It's like, open up, be more vulnerable. And then there's a bit of a mixed bag when they do it, uh, or they don't feel like they have the proper resources to go and do it, right? They're not sure what's going to happen if they, they open up and say, hey, man, like, listen, I'm really struggling. Like, I'm struggling to get out of bed. I freaking hate my job. I, like, I'm barely getting by. I don't know how to support myself. I'm really struggling. What, you know, what should I do? Or, you know, what have you done? And so I think that that's the, the inflection point that a lot of men find themselves at. And the challenge is that when we talk about some of the issues that men are going through, because statistically speaking, in a lot of ways, men are in decline right? In decline in the workforce, they're not going to college as much. I mean, it's all stuff that you've talked about on your show before. Lifespan, they're, health span. Lifespan, health span. They're living at home longer. They don't have as much money. They're not buying properties as much. Um, they're not graduating from college. I mean, it's just like across the board, testosterone's down. It's like, you know, there's some big things that we as a culture and as a society should be talking about. But what I've noticed is that when we want to talk about men's problems, if we want to talk about men improving themselves, Everybody's for that. Thumbs up, green light across the board. If we want to talk about the issues that men are having, uh, that's a very different challenge. And what men are usually met with is the solution of be more vulnerable. It's like, oh, you hate your life because your wife just divorced you and left you and took the kids and half of your net worth. Just be more vulnerable. Just open up and talk about it and that'll solve it. And it's like, well, but what about the judicial system? You know, what about talking about some of the things that are actually, um, you know, in, sort of infringing and impinging on men's lives? And so I think some of these things are, you know, I think that they're coming to a head in a lot of ways. I had a uh, post that I put. 
Before we get into his post, before we get into <clears throat> before we get into the post, you all can't see that, and it's fine. Let, let me make this bigger. I, I shouldn't have made whatever. The first time, masculinity is not being defined by men. He said, I, I have to cut it in part. This is the first time in history, in his mind, that masculinity is not being defined by men. Who is defining masculinity? Tell me that. Please let me know who is defining masculinity, if not men. Who is policing masculinity? Who are men performing masculinity for? Because it's not just to, quote unquote, get women. And I think we are lying a lot to men online because we want to sell them something. And the idea that, oh, masculinity is somehow in crisis. Okay, fine. I will give you. I will give you that masculinity is in crisis. Why? And I know what someone is going to say because of you. If my actions have an impact on your masculinity, we have a problem. If you do not tell me what it is to perform masculinity for every man, if every man gets to define masculinity for themselves, then we don't have a problem. If you believe one kind of masculinity or masculinity is just one thing and its performance is one way, then say that and let's find out who meets it and who don't. And then we'll say, you are a man and you are not. You are masculine and you are not. Let's do that. Because this vague notion of masculinity without it being ever defined is kind of ridiculous now. It's kind of ridiculous. Masculinity is in crisis. We want to be more manly. Also, the patriarchy affects and destroys men. So what is masculinity? How do you go about defining it? And do you define it only in relation to women and what does that mean about femininity because the fact that y'all are up here saying it's in crisis feels like you're saying women are attacking masculinity <laughs> i mean i you didn't say this but who's attacking masculinity girl are men attacking masculinity because if we as men are attacking our own masculinity then we need to have a conversation about it now i'm not going to opt into any of your foolishness let me be clear all, that, all this talk about, yes, we need to come together and define it, I don't care what you define. I do not care what two men or a couple of men online define. I'm not about to do it. I'm very happy how I am. But for the men who aren't happy, who want to reach this masculine ideal, y'all tell them what it is. Is it the fast car? Is it the Lamborghini? It is access to women. Oh, wait, it is access to women. Now women don't want you to access them. How does that affect your masculinity? It is a problem for me for someone to sit up there and lie talking about how this is the first time in history that masculinity is being defined by people other than men. What? Men are the one policing masculinity. What do you mean? Men are told to open up. This is true. Everyone is telling men to open up. Now, how you open up is important. You don't get to say, I am opening up because you told me to open up. So now I get to be disrespectful. Now I get to be toxic. Now I get to be unsafe. You don't get to do that. When people say open up, you can talk about your feelings. You can take ownership of what you want, but you don't get to abuse people either physically or verbally. So when you say men are being told to open up, but then they are being shut down, we need specifics. <laughs> we... <laughs> We need specifics because I agree men should open up more about how they feel and how they can better themselves. They shouldn't open up more about their toxic ideas that should probably be destroyed in their hearts or something. Like, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear what you think about women in general. I don't care. But... I can listen to you complain about your specific singular interaction with your specific singular partner. I can listen to that. I can listen to you talk about multiple partners, but what I won't abide by is you lying. I will not abide you lying. I will not sit there and say, we told men to open up so we get whatever we whatever come to us. No. You get to open up, hopefully. You get to talk about, actually, don't even open up online. <laughs> Go open up in a therapist. <laughs> 
Go open up in the therapist's office. Go open up to your family member. Uh, we don't want to hear you dragging people online. If you don't know yet how to communicate how you feel, maybe online is not the best place that you need to be. And we'll get to a video in a moment that fully encapsulates why it is that you should be opening up online about how you feel without really thinking about what it is that you're saying and the implication for any idea that you are espousing. Very simple. Very simple. All right. <clears throat> They're saying, we don't want to talk about men's problem and the system. Who is involved in these systems? <laughs> no. no, for real, for real, for real. Uh, who involved in the system? Who, <laughs> who control the system? When you say the family court, unless you're going to tell me that the, the judge was a woman, we going to have a problem. When you say the police doing this or doing that, I'm going to ask if the police is a man or a woman. When you say the system, and we have to, this is profoundly problematic. You cannot on one hand say men build the system and women are just side characters in whatever building is going on. However, we going to blame the system for men's outcome. Yeah, that's very difficult to do. If you claim ownership of the building and running operation of the system, you also have to take responsibility for how you and people like you engage and the outcomes that people like you have with the system that you build. What do you mean? Like, I don't understand this. Who are you blaming? And the blame is always very vague because it's very weird for them to blame women for men's outcome. <laughs> they know. They know it's very weird, so they don't overtly say it. It's implicit in whatever they are saying, but that don't make no sense. <laughs> that don't make no Women, and I will go through some of the history, like the fact that some of these men actually hate women while they want women to be there for them is really strange. It is actually strange. And I don't know if these men actually do hate these women or if they're just feeding into language that, that makes them feel good. But if the language is negative towards women and it makes you feel good, it says something about who you are and what you fundamentally believe. That is a problem. So I can't separate your language from who you are because it feels like they're one and the same. All right, let's get to his tweet now. Let's hear what he said about his tweet, because absolutely not. No, ma'am, I do not eat green eggs and ham. I really love that phrase. <laughs> Put up on Twitter that I got a lot of shit for, so I'm going to say it again. Publicly trying to work out why men are struggling is largely a thankless task. This is the zero-sum view of empathy. There is an assumption that any attention paid toward men takes it away from women or some of the minority group who is more deserving. After all, haven't men had it good enough for long enough? Maybe they should just suck it up for a while. But empathy does not work this way. It's not a limited resource. Recognizing the plights of men does not ignore the plights of women. And ultimately, women end up suffering in any case as it's this increasing cohort of apathetic, checked out, and resentful men who contribute to the exact lack of eligible partners that women say they're struggling with. Women who post boo-hoo, poor patriarchy sad, whilst also complaining about where are all the good men at, are committing mating logic seppuku. If one sex loses, both sexes lose. Male blame is something else that I see a lot, and this is what triggered what you just said. A common question is, why don't men just do better? Surely they can work harder in school, employment, and health. Chop, chop, men, hurry up and stop being so useless. Well, no other group is told that when they suffer with poor performance or accolades in the real world, that they should just pull themselves up by their bootstraps. We don't tell Okay, I'm going to stop you right there and say, absolutely not, you're a liar. <laughs> I don't know this man. I... What do you mean no other group is told to pull themselves up by the bootstrap? Unless you believe the only two groups are men and women and you are talking about women getting help and not being told to quote unquote pull themselves up by the bootstrap, if you're actually segmenting different kind of groups like I don't know a, <laughs> along racial lines, to sit up there and say no other group is being told to pull themselves up by the bootstrap is a lie from the pits of hell. It's a lie. It, it, like, what do you mean? But if you separate it to men and women, then are you saying the women group should help men? Because, like, we know it's a lie. All right, step back. We know it is not true that no other group is being told to pull themselves up by the, the, the bootstrap. If that were the case, African-Americans would have gotten reparation. So 
until African Americans get reparation, you are telling them to pull themselves up by the bootstrap. It is what it is. Don't at me at yourself. I don't want to debate you. You can debate yourself in the comments. I'm not even going to engage with that. Okay, fine. So we are not talking about other groups generally because we know as a matter of fact that other groups are actually being told to pull themselves up by their bootstrap. So that statement does not make sense unless we're speaking specifically to gendered group, i.e. men and women. And if you are saying women aren't being told to pull themselves up by the bootstrap, but men are, who is telling women or helping women and who is telling men? And also, who are the groups there's only two now in your mind then that should be helping men who who should be helping men the group that needs help should be helping men are you saying women should be helping men instead of telling men to pull themselves up by the bootstrap women should be helping men i'm not saying this is wrong i'm just trying to understand what you're saying because when you say no other groups I know you know there are other groups that have been told to pull themselves up by the bootstrap. I know you know that. So we cannot be talking about it from that perspective. We're talking about it down gender lines, where you are saying women will get help from the society and get lifted up into the ear, I guess. I don't know. And men won't. Who is doing the lifting? And if it's men, why aren't men helping other men? And it sounds like you should be speaking specifically to men still. But let's continue, because this is not true. And there is this whole... Let me leave that alone. Because it's a very specific kind of men, both black and white, that gets propelled over the other men, who then tell these men looking up to them that, hey, these people are trash. But like, you know their experiences with women aren't the majority <laughs> experience with women. So it feels like a grift, is what I'm saying. It feels like a grift, but I'm not calling him a grift. Or a, 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 it is what it is. Talking about no other group have been told to pull themselves up by the bootstrap. What do you mean? Keep the other group to talk about their problems. Instead, we spend billions in taxpayer money and private charity to set up committees, departments, campaigns, and funds to solve the problem. In simple terms, if a woman has a problem, we ask, what can we do to fix society? If a man has a problem, we ask, what can men do to fix themselves? You nailed it. Yeah, yeah. You didn't nail anything. One of those group has been subjugated historically by the other. One of the groups has been subjugated. And I feel like people think this is very long ago history, once upon a time. And the idea that women are just being given opportunities feels so fundamentally wrong. Like, I know it's wrong, but it also feels wrong in saying it because these men know it's not true. Y'all both... I'll wait for it. We need to go through some history, but I will go through the history when we get to the slut-shaming bit. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that summarizes it in a nutshell, right? The, the myth of male vulnerability is that it's wanted. And the reality is that society and people generally don't know what to do with it when it arises. Because when it comes forward... Society don't know what to do with a kind of vulnerability. If your vulnerability causes other people to feel physical pain or emotional pain for that matter because of how you decide to vocalize your anger, we have a problem. And so, like, these broad brushes around why certain ways of expressing yourself does not work is ridiculous. It is kind of reductive. And they, the, the, the thing that I, I fundamentally dislike about this particular clip is that both men traffic in these kind of vague language around men and masculinity and improvement and vocalizing issues there's nothing concrete about what it is that they're advocating for how should tell us how men should express themselves please tell us give us an example because the way y'all are talking is very amorphous like <laughs> this is an illusory contract we're not about to sign it and even if we sign it it can't be enforced because you absolutely said nothing Yes, yeah, someone said dog whistle, and that's what I think it is. 
Hey, yo, Haji, says, oh, please see me. So I just got here and I gasped when I saw you. It's giving fine. And period. Period. You should have seen me when I had my earrings in. But it was flopping all over the place too much. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't giving heterosexual prince vampire. <laughs> it wasn't giving masculinity. <clears throat> there are very real things that we have to look at socially in terms of altering. I mean, Richard Reeves, who I think we both interviewed and talked to, talks about registering boys, yep. you know, and it's like that creates so much controversy. Just that one thing, you know, a lot of people were against it and, you know, we shouldn't be treating boys and girls differently. And, you know, some people are on board with it, which is great. But I, I think that in large part, that's the attitude that society and culture sort of pushes back on men is, well, you guys just need to go and figure it out. And I think that a lot of young men hear that in today's world and are just checking out. Like I see it in my YouTube comments, you, yeah, know, I, you probably do too, where it's just like, you know, I did a video on, I did two videos, one on, you know, should you bother getting married or is marriage, is marriage dying? And then, you know, should you bother having kids? And it's very interesting to hear and see people's responses and to get the DMs back from it. And, and, you know, I think in large part, there's a huge cohort of men who are just like checking out from right. marriage, from having kids, from society in a very real way. And that should be cause for are they checking out? Are they being rejected? Because the checking out word feels like they're opting out of it. But if you're calling out that this is an epidemic of lonely men and they're sad and they're depressed, it also like they're checking out. It's not like they're being rejected. And now the question is why are they being rejected? No, no. Let's if we're gonna do it, let's talk about all of it. But let's talk about all of it. Don't say they're they're opting. They're not opting out of anything. They're not. You don't opt into depression. You don't. <laughs> Concern. That shouldn't be, like, we should not be approaching that problem. If women were just checking out from culture and society, like, in large numbers, I do not think that we would be approaching that problem with the sense of, well, you either just need to get your shit together or you just need to sit down and talk about it. We would be looking at what systemically are causing some of these issues and how can we actually go about creating a, a robust plan and structure to actually do something about those challenges that they're facing. So I think we need to bring that into, and I think that's an important part of any man's work, you know, to really be um, in the conversation of where, where do I feel stuck? You know, who can I talk to? Who can I open up to? Are there challenges that I feel bogged down by in my life that aren't just psychological or emotional, you know, that are maybe financial, um, that are maybe structural within my life that, that I'm frustrated by and be able to have some conversation and to work on those things, I think is incredibly important. Yeah. I, um, I got in trouble from a different group. I want to say something about super chats and cash app, but I, I won't say it because I feel terrible saying it. So I'm not going to do it, but know that I really, I really dislike this part of YouTube. Please note that. Um, Oh, <laughs> I'm going to call the cash app mangoes. Um, Alea, I don't know if you guys use your real name on here, so I won't say your real name. For Save a King on repeat. <laughs> no, she sent $10 said for Save a King on repeat. <laughs> ah, I wish I could find a way to put it up here. The architects who drew up the blueprint are now mad about the build-out. Aren't they responsible for how patriarchy shaped society? Apparently not. Apparently they are not. And it's just so frustrating because these men are selling. They're giving face. Look, you say what you want about these men. They're definitely giving face. And I believe a lot of the men watching are just... <laughs> These men are giving face, and I don't care what no one says. They're not selling therapy to me. They're, not, they're selling a look, and that's that on that. You're not going to convince me otherwise. You're not about to convince me otherwise that these men aren't adhering to some kind of, um, I, can't, I can't fully get into this. I, I still work. For saying uh, limits on speech are limits on sincerity, that if it doesn't make you any less vulnerable to not talk about your vulnerability. Like if you're, if you're so much of a pussy that you're struggling with the things you're struggling with, and then you layer on top the amount of pussiness that you need to not be able to talk about it, how does that make you any stronger? And a lot of people brought up the, you bring it up to your girl and you, this thing's gonna go wrong and then she's gonna leave you with the postman or whatever. And the, it's coming back to that stat at the start about men not even being able to open up to other men. And like, I'm speaking to myself, right? Like I'm speaking, this isn't me from a fucking high horse of like masculine virtue saying I got it all figured out. Um, but I do think that reassessing what we mean by vulnerability and the frame that is placed around these sorts of conversations. And again, for the women that are listening, like these are the guys that you're getting, going to get into a relationship with. These are the guys that are going to have to be up five times a night when the baby's got a stomach bug at six months old or whatever, right? Like this is, 
the degree of resilience that you require from your these are the men that's going to go up at five times, get up five times a night. They're not, they're not doing it. For all, for all, for all the conversation about feminist writing, the second shift being born out of feminist writing is something that is a deeply troubling. And the funny thing is, we're going to get into some ideas about when men get in a relationship and how it's really beneficial for men in particular who we have not learned how to cultivate friendships as men. And so when men get into relationships, they, through their partner, are able to develop friendships that are their partners, rightfully. Um, and that's how they build their networks a lot of the times. We're going to get into that later on. But it is an interesting reality <clears throat> that... <laughs> let me take this off the screen. <laughs> it is an interesting reality that when we think about the ways in which men and women are sort of going through the world and who gets to have meaningful bonds outside of intimacy in the bedroom, right? That men, we are incapable of, and not incapable in the like absolute sense, but in a more general sense, uh, a sweeping sort of indictment on patriarchy and masculinity, not every man, I shouldn't have to explain this, but that we are incapable of just forming meaningful friendships where we talk to each other about things that bothers us without a fight or without us being angry or anything like that, just like communicating some of the things that bothers us. Um, DJ says... Women are literally checking out of marriage and having kids, and he's convinced that if this were to happen, men would be proactive. <laughs> right? Right? Right. It's a... <laughs> Partner is not just in terms of their resources. It's emotionally as well. And the I, I fucking hate, hate it when people go, this is gynocentrism at work. I'm like, dude, like fucking hell. You really think that like women could coordinate or anybody could coordinate like some mass move toward one thing. It's the popular view at the moment because it makes you seem empathetic. If you support mm. women, it makes you seem like... Oh, remember that throughout the chat, throughout the live, we're going to be sending, putting up Sinji's uh, Patreon. Sinji's on Patreon. If you guys want to go there, her Patreon is a link there. Thank you to Els. Um, please, moderators, feel free to keep dropping it. Um, not just this live, but uh, for the rest of the year. Like you're standing up for the little person, right? It's the same tyranny of the minority rule that we see in everything. It's why trans athletes in sport are such a big deal. It's why kids getting hormones are such a big deal. It's why ensuring that, you know, we can move gay rights into the Middle East is such a big deal. Blah, blah, blah. Like, fine. Totally fine. Like, you know, well, not fine, but you know what I mean? Like, it's fine for you to talk about it. You can fucking open it up as a big deal. But it's not the same case when you're talking about male problems through a female frame. Mm -hmm. Like, the presumption, it's uh, the term from evolutionary psychology is a failure of cross sex mind reading. And I don't know why it's the case. I understand why publicly this tyranny of the minority or like the upheld, the upholding of the, of the underclass thing, like I understand why that has. Uh... This is intellectual dishonesty at its highest. For you to sit up here and say, you cannot understand why there is emotional, psychic discomfort when it comes to talking about, quote unquote, the oppression of men is ridiculous. You cannot have on one hand men beating the drum of how they create and maintain the system and how women's contribution is useless. Disagree with that assessment, by the way. You can't have that. And then on the other hand, also be confused about why it is that men complaining about the system oppressing them that people would be sort of like, what, what are you talking about? That's what people will be like. What are you talking about? Keep it a stack. <laughs> like, I'm confused as to how you're confused. I, like, you are not confused. You can't be confused. That's impossible. It is impossible. The way you speak lets me know that there is some level of intellect there. So you are not confused as to why it is in a system that has historically oppressed women, and it is not until recently that women, even in America, could engage politically, 
Even in political life, women were excluded from political life to be removed in that way as women and them coming together now to try to build economic power and ultimately self-actualize. For you to not understand why their issues would take precedent in their mind over men who were part of said patriarchy oppressing them, I don't know what you're talking about. And you don't have to agree with the assessment, but to sit up there and say, you don't know why. You don't, you can't fathom why it is that people would probably take some umbrage, even if they do engage in this. You don't understand how people might object. Like, you can't even think of a reason why people would object. Like, that don't make no sense. That, that doesn't make, make sense. And I know you know it doesn't make sense. I know you know it doesn't make sense, and you're just doing it to do it. You forgot to undo one more button. Because <laughs> I sure enough, I sure enough could have buttoned this up. I sure enough could have buttoned it up. But I didn't do it to show my chest, which is coming along amazingly. I did it to show off this that I will never be able to wear outside of the context of this costume. <laughs> Y'all play too much in these comments. I mean, don't stop, though. Please do, uh, send on comments, because I'm definitely going out in the streets in this, and I need all the confidence I can muster, because God knows I'm going to be in a corner hiding. <laughs> God knows... I'm going to be in a corner hiding if I can't get this blood makeup on my face and my teeth in. Because I need to hide. I, I'm not showing up in the world like this. <clears throat> um, why that makes sense. Like, it, mm. it's, it's got some status associated with it. What I don't understand is how it actually gets pushed into capturing the frame of a conversation around like what men should do. Why is it that you, know, the, you sent me this insight from the American Psychological Association? Uh, traditional masculinity is defined as harmful and damaging to boys and men's mental health. Uh, modern therapy basically treats men like defective women. Um, yeah, I, 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 that's the bit where I actually think, well, fucking hell, like that is gynocentrism at work, even if it's not coordinated by some cabal of fucking hooded women, like big titty hooded women, like all drinking male adrenochrome or something and, and eating fried foreskins. Like that's not necessarily what's happening, but in terms of a cash value of what's occurring, I do think that that's what we're ending up with. I'm just waiting for the animated videos of your commentary and then the animation on the front, like big titted hooded women frying up foreskin. It's, you know, have you ever seen the midnight gospel? Uh, yeah. Spin a yarn. I'll spin a yarn all day. Spin a yarn. Every single morning for over three years now, I've started. You just annoyed me. <clears throat> So, in the conversation, we talk about the tweet, and he's asking about empathy. Can I zoom in? Will this make me zoom in? Yeah, good. He's asking about empathy, and my question is, empathy from whom? Who do we need empathy from? That is the, the, the fir first question issue because i do think it is men who need to show other men empathy particularly men who do not fit certain kinds of ideas about masculinity right and the idea that women somehow are oppressing men and male masculinity like don't make no sense to me they, this is gibberish said with an accent so we believe Things were being said. Nothing was being said there. Men need other men. You cannot look to women to help men. When women are just now beginning to see potential for self-actualization, it's almost like no one said this to be fair. It feels like they're saying women step back a little because men need to <laughs> men need to catch up. And that's a weird thing to say to a group that has not had the kind of historical advantage that men have had, right? It is odd to say, oh, women are biologically predisposed to doing better in university. Well, you should have thought of that when you excluded them from school. You should have thought about that when you were developing curriculums around factory workers in universities and, and high school. You should have thought about that when you were developing school systems 
for producing intellects in a society. You should have thought about that. The problem is you didn't even think about women when you were developing the whole realm of academia. Women weren't even an afterthought because they weren't a thought. And now that they can engage and do better than us, why are we upset? Y'all built the system. Y'all had all the advantages in the world. And now look at we, look at us. No other group is told pull, pull themselves up by the bootstraps. That is a lie. I'm not even going to engage with that anymore. What you fail to do is describe what masculinity should be. Y'all said everything except defining that, and that should have been a question. What is causing men to, quote, check out of society? No, for real. Let's actually talk about it. What is causing men to check out of society? Ask them. Ask men. Get a bunch of men on a platform and ask them, why are y'all checking out of society? Please let me know that. Let the world know that so we can figure out if we can help or should help. Why are... Because if, if men are checking out... I'm not saying this is the truth, right? But if women's involvement in society means that women can now provide for themselves, women still want to be with men. Maybe they want you to show up in different ways. So the idea that men are, quote unquote, checking out of society, completely fine. It is a completely fine idea. I don't believe they're checking out. It is fine, though. Why? And if it is the case that they don't believe that they should work because women are working. They don't need to go to school because women are going to school. If that is what they believe, we need to convince us how to re-engage in society without telling women that they need to check out or they need to pull back. If you can do that, I'm fully on board. If we can find a way to tell men or encourage men to do better and be better without telling women to slow down fully on board. It is wrong and absolutely hypocritical to look at a group who, have, who has been historically marginalized and excluded, put off to the fringes of societies in most ways. It is sad and unfortunate to look to them and tell them that they're doing too well. That is wrong in my opinion. That is absolutely wrong. All right, so let's continue because he. there was another part of the conversation. Um, I don't know if I want to go to the dad part, but let's, let's, go, to, let's go here. Who knows? Let, let's just do it. Like Nike said, let's do it. <laughs> I know it's just do it, but And so I, I kind of have to acquiesce, otherwise that might feel dangerous or unsafe, especially for young kids, you know, like three to five. And then presumably this probably shows up echoed in relationships later in life. 100%. Yeah, 100%. And a lot of what happens, what happens for a lot of parents, is especially if you're a boy that grows up with a mom as your primary caretaker, she might do a phenomenal job. This, you know, this isn't to knock on you know, single moms. There's a ton of single moms out there that do phenomenal. Um, but what will happen often is that that mother will try and discipline or create discipline for her son by reinforcing and over-reinforcing where he's good, right? where he's being a good boy, where he's acquiescing to what she's asking for. And she'll do that by nurturing him constantly. And so he will learn very quickly that how he gets feminine attention, how he gets female validation and affection is by acquiescing to, to her needs and her wants. And so he'll orient himself in a very sort of hyper-fixated way towards what do, what do women need, what do women want, and my needs and my wants are on the back burner. And maybe once I've you know, ensured that her needs and wants are met, then I can bring mine in. Yeah, Adam Lane Smith talks about uh, the good boy paradox. Like, I just, I just want to be... I don't know who they're talking about. I have no... I have zero. I... <laughs> I have zero idea who these men are talking about. Because when do you... Men are out here cheating on women, abusing. Like I, I'm, I'm so confused as to. And some of these men come from single mother homes, right? 
what do you mean men who grow up in single mother home <laughs> are acquiesce to women? Because what do you mean? Look, I'm not going to go as far as to say y'all are wrong. I'm going to go and say I'm going to need some research on this. I don't need an article. I don't need an op-ed. I need some some hardcore research on this. Because you're not about to sit there and convince me that the same men who are causing all these problems are the men you are saying acquiesce to women and put their needs second to the woman. Ain't no way. You lying. Mm -mm. Nope, 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 nope. You are lying. <laughs> the truth ain't in you. <laughs> well, yo, yeah, these men really want to, these men really want us to believe that the problem with men is that they put the woman's interest first in really <laughs> Look, maybe you can have an argument with Will Smith. Maybe you can say Will Smith. Maybe. And I know a lot of y'all will be fighting in the comments about this, but maybe. But you're going to sit up there and you're going to tell me that when you're raised by a single mother, you grow up just acquiescing to women. As if we don't see these men online dragging women who've been raised by single mothers. To be fair, they don't. There's a, there's a separation. They don't blame women for this. And that's that was refreshing. Like. They're going to go into absentee fatherism if we get to there, because I don't really care. But they're going to go there. So they're not blaming women. They're saying the men, men, boys grow up and become men who acquiesce to women because they didn't have a father. That's ultimately what they're saying. But what I'm arguing here is that it's not true. Now, I'm arguing that it's not true, and I'm willing to walk that back if we can find research to substantiate the fact that men in single mother home become good guys and acquiesce to women and put their put their, put, their, put their needs put their needs second to that of the woman. Go period. Continue the foolishness. Told that I'm a good boy. I, I want to make sure, like you basically find surrogate mothers in each partner subsequently as, as you grow up. One other thing, a conversation I haven't really had much recently, but I was talking about a couple of years ago, was the pressures around men and sex. This is a real double standard, I think, in the way that we see men and women. Um, you know, female body dysmorphia, uh, concerns about how they perform during sex. Uh, can I orgasm through having sex? Can I, can I take my top off? Like, you know, do I need to keep my bra on because I'm embarrassed about my body? You know, all of these sorts of conversations. Like, I'm not saying that they've been fixed and I'm sure that there's loads of work that needs to be done for girls to feel better about this stuff. But the conversations largely be normalized, you know? Like when you've got Feral Girl Summer being like a meta meme for an entire year, you know that the, the, this kind of conversation around not shaving your legs or about what your body looks like when you're on your period and all that sort of stuff, like it's kind of been had. Is that, the, of, is that the equivalent of like fuckboy summer? Like is that a hashtag? So there was hot girl, there was hot girl summer, uh -huh. right? Then because every culture, the a requisite of any cultural movement is a countercultural movement to the same thing, <laughs> right. right? So like for every uh, Dan Bilzerian, there's a MGTOW. And for every hot girl summer, there's a feral girl summer. And feral girl summer was advising girls to like not wash, not shave, like uh -huh. just completely just descend into slobbery as much as you can uh, because they needed every culture needs a counter. Girl, this was not our side. I guarantee you, this was not our side of the culture. I, I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was that. Look, you know what I mean. It was. I'm pretty sure this wasn't us. <laughs> this, <laughs> this feels like no shower, no. I've, I'm pretty sure this wasn't us. I have not heard about the feral girls summer. <laughs> A period. Get it how you live it, I guess. <laughs> culture. Um, but yeah, one of the one of the conversations that's really particularly uncomfortable for guys to talk about is like communicating with a partner about what they want in the bedroom and opening up about whether they are or are not hot to trot all the time. Um, you know, there's a there's an expectation that men are the sexual protagonists and women are the sexual gatekeepers, even within a relationship. Like how many people listening to this conversation right now have guys or girls have had some thought that they haven't ever brought These men are kind of toxic. You cannot engage this way with this kind of content without doing deep analysis. 
when men are seen as the aggressors and women are seen as the protectors of themselves from these aggressors, to pretend like you don't know how the culture creates and then reaffirms these ideas around gender and how that bleeds specifically into patriarchy and male domination is absolutely absurd. Like, you cannot be doing this kind of deep thinking on one area around men's issue and then completely ignoring the root causes when it comes to sort of why women would have a hot girl summer or why sexual revolution becomes an important mark in history for women or why birth control, for example, is important to women. Like, you cannot have this conversation and completely ignore the ways in which women were specifically targeted, even through religion, to make sure that they remain pure. And how men in these scenarios become the specific kind of aggressor in the system around sex and sexuality. I am confused as to why you are blaming. Like, who are you blaming? Who are you blaming for the fact that even in a relationship, women are not the sexual aggressors? Um, and I shouldn't use the word aggressor because it makes it seem violent. But the, the fact is... We have created a system where we shame women for how they engage sexually. We are going to talk about Lori Harvey and Megan Thee Stallion in a moment when we get to that part of the, the, the live show. But the fact is, we shame women around their body counts. The fact is, we shame women about how they engage sexually. That is the reality. That has been the reality. I don't know where you were. But that has been the reality. So to sit up there and talk about it in this way where you don't, you're not sure why, and the idea that men need to be able to speak about what they want and what they don't, they have been. Have you not been listening? They have been. Literally, people engage in the conversation online are talking about how women's pleasure is not important. Like, where have y'all been? And who are y'all talking to? Men have issues, but these aren't it. Now, are men expected to perform at a high level in certain areas? <laughs> uh, yeah, because they're talking about it. They talk, they're lying about it. They have men out here talking about all these women for no reason. And now you're concerned. I don't know why you're concerned. <laughs> Someone put the friendly llama on timeout. <laughs> she played too much. Brought up about who initiates sex. Like, it is so, so common, right, for that to be a point of contention, that the guy always feels, maybe more often than not, perhaps, the guy always feels like it's him that has to do it, and the girl's nervous about it because she's, it's the way, that she, there's never been a requirement to train it otherwise, and male and female sex, right? Why? Why, 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 why? Why, why, why? The funny, the funny thing is, he does not go against the patriarchy. He's mad that traditional masculinity is being attacked. They believe traditional masculinity is under attack. So you want to maintain the patriarchy. Okay, fine, girl. You got it. Within the framework of said patriarchy exists the woman who is pure and does not want to engage in that way and men who do. And then we have roles to play in the boudoir. Like, what do you mean? You can't not understand this. Like, you literally cannot. Double negative. You cannot not understand this. You have to understand this. I refuse to believe you don't understand this and how it makes sense, how it makes absolute sense. It works in different ways, blah, 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 so on and so forth, right? Um, but talking about, like, with guys, guys not being in the mood, 
Like for a girl, if a girl does decide that in a relationship that she's going to make the, like, let's initiate some sex this evening. But like, there is an expectation that guys are hot to trot all the time. And if you've had a rough day and you're like, darling, I, I know that I'm supposed to just be like, stand to attention upon command <laughs> <laughs> in many ways. Um, but I'm like, it's just not, not tonight. And then that, that's take. Why? 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 So we just going to ignore patriarchy. We just, we just going to ignore patriarchy. taken in a very different sort of way. I think that's interpreted in a very different sort of way by women because there is this presumption again that, oh, that must be because there's something wrong with me. Whereas we've seen memes, you know, the family guy, the Homer Simpson, you know, like try, Johnny Bravo, like trying to get physical female attention from a woman and being rebuffed is just like sort of built into the this makes sense. It is also not true. Like people reject, people say no. But when you say the cultural memeplex, I don't think it is in the same way in reverse. And I think that that, you know, also talking about what it is that you want in bed, what the level of sexual frequency, fantasies, all that sort of stuff is such a tough conversation for men to have. Because again, it's, it's even more of a different kind of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just. It's not that tough. It is not tough. He, she's lying. Men do it all the time. Men do it. I'm going to move on because I I, I, I want to get to the more meaningful part of the slide. Men do it all the time. And to sit here and lie about the fact that men actually do this all the time. They literally, the whole conversation should be that men are able to talk about what they want when women can't. If you, what have you found? If you're not saying that, then we don't care. Here's the father part. Here's the, here's the dad part. Just, I'm going to only play this. And the reason I'm playing this is because I want to see that they don't just blame women. And that was kind of refreshing, but still absolutely bizarre. Because it's almost like they want changes in the system but they want to keep the system how it is because when you're sitting there talking about there is an attack on traditional masculinity but you want men to be freer and to talk it's like girl you you don't know what you want it is what it is that's fine you don't know what you want and you have spoken about fatherlessness a good bit over the last few weeks on the show actually and then plus today what, what have you been sort of learning about the impact of fatherlessness and, and how do boys model men when dad isn't around what happens I think you know, I used the word vacancy before, and I use that specifically because, you know, over the last decade, I've sat with tens of thousands of men. Like it's just, it's a lot of men virtually and in person. And there, for a lot of guys, a vacancy forms within them, like an actual sort of emotional or psychological void where when dad isn't around, it creates this big question mark. Like the unknown becomes somewhat terrifying. You know, they don't know how to take risks properly or they, they try and compensate um, for that by taking really stupid risks, you know, risks that will get them killed. Um, they're not really too sure if it's okay to say no and to have really assertive direct boundaries. And so what ends up happening is that for a lot of guys that have no father around, they become your classic nice guy, right? They, they start to orient themselves, their whole orientation of how do I be a man in the world? There's no model for me to orient myself towards or away from. So a lot of men will create a life in opposition of their father. I don't want to be like that guy. I don't want to be that drunk. I don't want to be that fucking asshole that yells at you know mom and you know beats his kids and drinks too much. They either orient in opposition of their father or, or in repetition of their father, right? So they either say, "Okay, I don't." Blah 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 blah. This is not true. The parent, the parent influence both mother and father on the child is the minimus compared to that of the society that they grow up in. In fact, it is better to have a child with a community of other fathers um, that raise their children well than it is to have a good father in a bad neighborhood. That's how important the area and the community that you're growing your child in is to the child's development. So whatever they're talking about, no. But I'm going to continue because you do need fathers. Ultimate Inkman Valencia time out. Fenel Lama also needs to be in timeout for this. I want to be like him, or he's incredible, and I want to orient myself towards how do I be like him? You know, how do I build my body in the way that he built it, et cetera? So when that's not present, young boys, it's not that they don't want to orient themselves towards being a man, they just don't have any symbol for it. And so they start to orient themselves towards, well, how do I get affirmation from women that I'm a good man, that I'm a good boy? And so the over-validation from women starts to become very prominent within young boys' lives. 
And again, like I said, it'll show up at home, it'll show up at school, it'll show up if he's you know, seeing a therapist or whatnot. And it'll create a framework psychologically within young men where they will try and live in repetition of what women say is good for them, uh, you know, to, to reinforce if they're being a good man, you know, if they're dealing with their anger properly or proportionately, if they are treating the women, you know, how they should, or they will live in opposition to what women say. So they'll actually start to, instead of push against dad, instead of push against other men, they'll start to push against women. And you see this big movement online that has, I think, in some way. Yeah, I see how none of that makes sense. So if... <laughs> <laughs> if you, it, <laughs> there is no direct sort of correlation or causal connection between the kind of man you become and your parent. And so, I mean, there should be, and there is, but in his um, dynamic, what he's saying is like, okay, you can come out this way or that way. Well, you can do that with or without the father there. You can do, girl, ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm going to get into that. I'm just going to move on. What, the only reason I showed that was to point out that they, they were not just blaming women. They were talking about um, <clears throat> fathers not being in the home, right? Now, the lonely man epidemic, we... Um, so the Science Focus had an article, and it was how loneliness is killing men and why mates are a kind of medicine, Right? So I went to make sure the author was British um, so that the word mate could actually be um, friends and not like a, a, a partner, right? Because I wouldn't have read this. So yes, mate, the benefit of friends are profound. Having a strong social circle is associated with a longer life and fewer illnesses. Your pals lower blood pressure and trigger positive chemicals in your brain. People with strong social networks are less stressed, more resilient, and more optimistic. They, they are more likely to be a healthy weight and less likely to suffer a cognitive decline. They also enjoy some protection from cancer, heart disease, and depression. So being alone is not good for you, essentially. Being with friends is very beneficial to your health. But there's one group, a big group, that is missing out on these benefits. Men are lonely. <laughs> Growing numbers of men are standing at the bottom of that hill alone and overwhelmed. As surveys point to a re <laughs> recession of social connection, sorry, among those of us with a Y chromosome. Stop commenting like this in the chat. Let me, wait, wait, before I continue reading, this is super important, and I don't want to be clipped and be made to say that I'm laughing at the, the article. I am not laughing at the article. I'm laughing at the comments because I, you know what, let me take the comments off. I'm going to put the comments on when I get back on. Mm -mm. Y'all play too much. All right, let me continue reading. <clears throat> Uh, a YouGov poll, a YouGov poll in 2019, concluded that one in five men have no close friends, twice as many as women. In 2021, the survey, the Survey Center on American Life, found that since 1995, the number of American men reporting that they had no close friends jumped from three to 15 percent. In the same research, the number of men saying they had at least six close friends halved from 55% to 27%. Eww. One of the main things we've shown is that two sexes are very different in their social style, says Professor Robin Dunbar, an anthropologist at the University of Oxford, whose work centers on social bonding. The girl's social world has been built around personalized relationships. It matters who you are, not what you are. For men, what makes the difference is investing time in doing something together. It might be meeting up for a pint or arranging to climb. The activity is irrelevant as long as it's a group activity, and that often doesn't involve a lot of conversation. There's a bit of banter, but really the content is close to zero. <laughs> so men don't know how to talk to each other. 
And men don't talk to each other, essentially. Um, isolation is more likely to happen to men with lower incomes as social experience tend to cost money. One of the men in my research sang in a social singing group, but when his group moved... <laughs> When his group moved venues, he couldn't afford the bus fare to travel, thus increasing his isolation. <laughs> I don't know why I opened up the comments thought y'all were being good. <laughs> ah, I hate this. I hate that y'all are taking making fun of this. I need to take responsibility. Sorry. I need to take responsibility for my community and say it is not right that you all are laughing about this and calling people broke. That not the best. <laughs> Please wait. This is supposed to be a boring. By the way, this is supposed to be a boring live. So let's get back to um. Let's not we cutting up. Let's get back to being boring, please. Let's chill and, and be boring. Please don't say things in the comments. <laughs> are my expectations are my expectations too high for this? <laughs> Are my expectations too high? Are my expectations too high <laughs> for the community in my eyes? I can't be crying. <clears throat> Was that way too high? <clears throat> Men show a stronger link between marital status and loneliness than women. Radcliffe says, um, which is to say, unmarried women are less lonely than unmarried men. I was link I would link this statistical trend to a greater reliance on partners for intimacy in men and a greater ideation of the family's role. For men who don't have a partner, loneliness can be particularly severe. Again, for men who don't have a partner, loneliness can be particularly severe. Because males are socially lazy. <laughs> Wait, wait, the way, the way they're writing this is a problem for me. I've read this so many times. This is not the full article. I've literally went through and started clipping important parts of the article. Um, <laughs> Themis, why you format this slide like that? Is this how men read? Look, I was trying to make a, a, a tree. <laughs> yes, this is how men read. This is how our brains work. <laughs> <laughs> man, because men are socially lazy, what tends to happen is the wife end up driving the social environment for the household, says Dunbar. The guys end up becoming friends with the partner of their wife's friend. The, the friends with the partners of the wife's friend, because they are there. Men's reliance on their partner can also lead to further problems. For one, it places a lot of pressure on the woman, in heterosexual relationship at least, and if the relationship breaks down or the man is widowed, it can leave him abruptly isolated. <laughs> when you have a divorce or you've, you're widowed, suddenly half your social world vanish overnight. <laughs> <sighs> so I decided not to put this article I know I, I removed this then there's another article by Healthy Mail um, talking about loneliness the silent epidemic and I didn't want to read this because I'm tired of reading this because we are all just kind of pretending like we don't know what the problem is but like then we all know what the problem is so let's let, let me get into it yeah <clears throat> It is very difficult. It is very difficult to get empathy when you're engaged online. And the reason is these men. So, look, I don't know why this woman has a bicycle pump. <laughs> I don't know why this woman has a bicycle pump. 
pumping air into her car tire. I don't know why she's doing that. But some men decided that they would take a picture of her and say that I don't need a man, right? Now, she could be doing this wrong. She definitely is doing this wrong. (laughs) And it don't look good. But the idea that women can pump their car tire and that's why they need men is ridiculous. And what it exemplifies for me is I do believe fundamentally that men don't feel needed. And the lack of feeling needed does affect them. And the way they show up on the internet is to find reasons why women need them. I... <laughs> Girl, I don't know why you got a bicycle pump. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why... You... <laughs> I don't know. Look, I I know nothing about cars, but I would not be doing that. And you can just drive in and have your car serviced and you're pumped into your tire. It is what it is. But the fact that you took a picture, you didn't go help. You took a picture of her and then you posted it on the internet. It wasn't just a picture, by the way, it's a video, but I don't feel like playing the video. And you posted it on the internet talking about the I don't need a man. Well, she don't need a man. Obviously, she's existing without a man. She's living without a man. And even though she cannot pump her <laughs> ear into her car tire, I mean, she's still surviving without you. And there are men who do not know how to do this. Because I'm not about to do it. I would pay to get it done. I'm not like I'm not about to go find a, 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 a <laughs> at a gas station to put ear in. Like no, I, mean, I I don't got time for it. But so like it's not just women can't do it. There are men who can't do it either. But this is where it becomes insidious. I am not going to play this video, but this is a video of a man breaking into this woman's house as she tries to push him out. Again, this is a man pushing his way into a woman's house, and the woman is there trying to prevent him from coming in. Now, the video is bad. It could have been a skit. We know how these skits are all over online. I don't know. But what is important is this comment Right there, that is circled. Don't worry if you can't see the comment. I'm going to zoom in on this comment now. <clears throat> so the comment said, why women need men. That's what the comment says. Why women need men. And then the shrugging emoji. Let's go back. This is a man breaking into, pushing past a woman to enter her house. Right? And your comment witnessing a man pushing past a woman into her house is to say why women need men. Now, he moves on. He he made this comment and 376 people liked the comment. So whatever. This other man comes on and says, they don't hear that, so they're going to learn the hard way. What are they going to learn the hard way, sir? What are women? You're watching a video of a man breaking into a woman's house. And your first thought is that women are going to learn that they need men. Make that make sense for me. The other guy says, yep, that's the reality. Don't care to listen. So, oh, well, carry on, sir. Okay. You don't know if she's married, first and foremost. You don't know if she's partnered. You don't know any of this. But you watch a video. Let me calm down. Let me... All right. We are watching a video of a man breaking into a woman's house And you're going to say, okay, that's why women need men. Carry on, sir. They go learn. Let's put that back up. Yep, that's the reality. They don't care to listen. So, oh, well, carry on, sir. You do realize 
that the person engaging in the bad behavior currently is the man breaking into her house, not that she doesn't have a man. Like, she is not wrong for being in a home without a man. He is the one who is wrong for trying to pass into, come into her house for no reason. I don't know why he wants to come in there. I am failing to see why you would say, carry on, sir, if she can, he or she will feel. Why? What is the punishment? Why is she being punished? Because she doesn't have a... First of all, you don't know if she has a man. But even if she doesn't have a man, is he now right? Is it now appropriate for men to be going into people's house? Shouldn't we be collectively dragging the... Oh, there's a woman. There is a woman who, like, I, I was going through... This woman said, why I say I always need them. Need... Why I say I always need them, ma'am. Google bun be home invasion. That's what a man will do when his wife is home. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. You believe, young lady, that that's why you need a man. Does this man go to work? Are you ever going to be home alone? Are, are you ever going to be home alone? You cannot use this moment to justify why you need a man. These men are looking for any excuse to explain to you why you need them. They are selling themselves to you in a society where you actually don't need men. Like, let's be clear. In days past, you actually needed a man to survive because that's how you were going to have access to political life. That's how you were going to have uh, a family. That's how you were going to live. That's how you're going to have economic output. Like, that's how, that's how it was. Now, women don't need men. Women want to have a man around. It is that simple. That is fine. That is completely fine. These men in an attempt to scare you into wanting and quote-unquote feeling like you need them, are telling you that you need them to protect you. Okay, fine. Let them do that. Why are you contributing, talking about that's why you need... Why? Why you need a man? Because unless he's going to be with you 24-7 in your home, I don't know how that's going to help. I, I don't know how that's going to help you. Wait, Demis, are you dressed as cho Chocolate Fabio? <laughs> My costume will remain unfinished. I should have had... I was going to be like Count Dracula, and I wanted to give you the Count. Um, but I, 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 I failed. I failed miserably because my... Um, my teeth didn't come. I wanted them silver. They didn't show up. And my makeup artist is going to be late. And so um, I thought they were here, but something else was here. And I need to, like, do my face and do the scarring and all of that. Um, but I might not do it. I might just go out like this because I'm annoyed with my thing. I like the outfit, though. Fix a duo or assemble a table. Hang on. <laughs> Men have rendered themselves useless, broke and inept, never wins the prize. Why do I need you 2023 less punch? Demis is giving sexy smart pirate. Period. Thank you, Stars Above the Emerald Forest. Okay, ch period. Girl, I've been working on the chest. That's the only thing I work out now. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm feeling myself now. So, 
Now we get to the, the part of the video where we go back to don't skip leg day, Themis. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't, I will not. Let's watch this man now. Because <clears throat> when I say it's hard to find empathy, this is what I mean. Because even in the cry for help, these people don't know how to like explain themselves and not be completely disparaging to other people. So let's let's hear it. look at you and how Wait. and how receptive if they are to Wait, your... this, this is super important i'm gonna wait for that video because i don't want to play that one yet mm -mm. nope don't want to play that one yet i need y'all to see this <clears throat> first and maybe only this because i want to see the original i want y'all to see this original video an absolute hot <laughs> mess of a video. Here we go. <clears throat> so this young man decided that he was going to get his uh, TV together, get his camera, get his best looks, and come on the internet and explain to us why he is where he is. Now, I have to say, what is it? Trigger warning? Um, trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. The reason is he he touches on some very important topics around unaliving oneself. So if you have to step away, I understand. But absolutely not. I won't drag him because I don't drag people generally, but we need to talk about this. Because in a way, you come up here looking for sympathy and do all this. Hey, what's up, everyone? I haven't had a whole lot of energy or motivation as of late to film my normal repertoire of videos. And I kind of needed to rant about this, and I've tried to make this four or five times, so hopefully I can just get it out in one take here, because I really don't feel like doing any editing tonight. Um, I've been feeling rather upset lately about my uh, not being in a relationship. I'll go to, like, like family parties, and all basically my entire family is either engaged or getting married now. Um, I see people having children. I see people making a lot more money than me and having much more success, and it's, it's not like I need that necessarily, but I'd like to have something going for my life, and I keep trying to do my own thing, but the fact that I, I can't keep a consistent source of social relationships going and i did have that for a while but then you know one person will get into a relationship so i won't see them anymore all right the first thing you talked about was economics get your resume together get a job or go back to school i would say go that route first right maybe it's not the easiest thing to do in this economy i understand there's a lot happening you might not be able to get the job that you want your first priority is not it is not having friends and socializing right now. It is important and you will get there. But as the research indicated, people who don't have resources tend to be more lonely because they can't afford to be in community with other people. They can't do things. They can't afford the bus fear to go meet up with their friends. So your priorities should be to get some sort of income. Or another person, another couple people move away, and pretty, you know, pretty soon my whole fucking group of friends that I can talk to on a regular basis is just fucking gone. Um, so it's been making me want, like, need a relationship more and more. And I've, I've been asked in the past um, about what I thought of MGTOW. Your friends moving away means now you want a relationship. It sounds like you don't want this person. Like, the idea that I just want a relationship is so sad. It is so absolutely sad. Because... You need to know what kind of relationship you want. And the fact that your friends left shouldn't be the catalyst for, quote unquote, wanting a relationship. You just want someone to use. You just want someone to use to fill your time, to be there for you. Like, you don't want a relationship. You just want someone to control and be around. Like, the, no, that's not a relationship, sir. From my perspective, I could be wrong. When, what MGTOW is, is men going their own way. <laughs> so, Marion, Demons look like somebody loving him good. 
And I want to fight that person. It's all of y'all. I promise you it's all of y'all. <laughs> Remember to go to Sin's Patreon. It is patreon.com forward slash Cynthia G. I can't. I can't. Y'all play too much. It stands for and it's basically men who are opting out of relationships and opting out of traditional male responsibilities because how the current laws are set up and how traditional male responsibilities are just sacrificing and then as soon as you're not useful to society and people anymore you basically get cast out you know when you work a sir if MGTOW means men going their own way you shouldn't even have it in your mouth at all you literally just said you want a relationship you literally just said you wanted a relationship so you're not going your way you're only fa look empathy find it found you want a relationship you've articulated as much in this video get MGTOW out of your vocabulary quick fast and in a hurry all right let's continue a construction job and then oh you get hurt well no one really wants to help you anymore your family's gonna fucking leave you because you're not bringing in money and it's just like there's there's no incentive to do that um that being said um i believe there's a really strong evolutionary drive to uh find a partner and find someone to be with uh even for men and i don't personally find even despite the risks that uh foregoing that for much longer is something i can really deal with and maybe the fact that other men have gone through that gauntlet for a long time and they've learned their lesson that's just visually in their mind that they don't want to do that. I do find that I learn a lot better from a bad lesson than being told something's bad for me. Um, like if I actually do something and it doesn't work out, then it's ingrained in my brain in a way that, you know, you can't learn right away. That being said, I don't think it's a mistake for everybody to get into a relationship, despite the fact uh, how the laws are set up with marriages and divorce. I definitely have no intention of ever getting married and hopefully not having kids, at least in the near future, if not ever, it just doesn't seem appealing to me right now, but I do want a relationship. Um, and it's despite this, I've wanted this for like like decades now. And it's something that's that's largely eluded me. Um, I've had periods of time where I've like had a lot of attraction from women to me, um, and it kind of shows on like my old Facebook memories. And I can see like you know girls being not subtle about being into me. And it's just like at that time it was it was basically irrelevant because I didn't have my own place. I didn't have a good source of income. My mom was very strict, and it's just like you just don't have the resources to do any of that. And if someone had told me growing up that. Uh, instead of just like, oh, you should get a job so you can fucking get a place and live a good life. But like if people like told me like, oh, you know, you should take care of yourself and do these things and go out and do stuff um, because then, you know, women are actually going to want to be around you and like you. I probably would have been a lot more um, receptive to that rather than staying inside and playing video games most of the time. And the things that I did do, my friends basically just dragged me along to. And it's just like, I was never. So, you know, the issue you just articulated that you are not socially the best be socially better like i know that's easier said that okay let, let's be fair i don't know i don't i'm very so <laughs> i am an introvert at heart but when i'm on i'm on i go out we we have fun i meet for like i meet people every night and people are like oh my god let's hang out again like period so it's like i can't pretend that i know what this feeling is like and so i'm trying to understand what this feeling is like. And I don't know what it is like, where you're like, no one loves me, no one wanna to talk to me, I don't have any friends. But you pointed out that you had people interested in you in one point, but you didn't have any money, you didn't have a place to stay, and your mom didn't let you to bring people over. Feels like you also now know the solution. You didn't have money, figure out how to find money. You didn't have a place, find a place and move out of your mom's home so that she's not strict. I feel like you, I feel like you know what you should do. And if women were into you then, then maybe they're still into you. Who knows? Give it a go. <laughs> like, it feels like you know what you should do, but you don't want to do it because it's hard. And instead of doing anything, you are like crying on the internet. Like, I don't under, like, Look, you're average at best, right? I don't mean that to be derogatory. I'm actually making fun because that's what Kevin Samuel said. This is not a bad thing. You can find some... Let me counseling the mans. <laughs> I don't believe if you found a decent job and you cleaned yourself up that you couldn't find someone. Like, I, like, I feel like you could. Like, this feels very lazy to me, and that's not the right... This is why I'm nobody's therapist, by the way. 
This is, I wish my therapist was like this, right? I wish my therapist was like this because honestly, all I'm getting, all I want to do is like say you're lazy and tell you what to do. Because like at this point, I'm not about to sit there and hear you whine for like 40, like I'm not doing that. Like I can't be a therapist because I don't want to hear you whine, whine on and on and on. No, here's what you do. Go do it. You already know what you need to do. Why am I sitting here talking with you about it? Like I don't like, no, when you don't know what to do, then you can come talk to me. But it sounds like you know exactly what it is that you need to do. And it, this is sad because it could just be a moment of him being upset and he turned on the camera and recorded it for no reason. I mean, it's still up on his channel, so he, he's very proud of it. So let's continue. We're really too into them. And also, I, I guess I didn't have a whole lot of good support, so I was, like very, uh, I was very prone to giving up right away when I was younger. Um, so yeah, I never really got a whole, with a few exceptions, but like very brief times, I've never really had a real relationship other than a long distance one that, um, and I've had a few brief sexual partners over the years, but it just, it feels like I've really never had a true intimate relationship with somebody. Um, and as I get older, it's like sinking in that, well, you know, I'm definitely not an alpha male because I just, I don't know. It's like, even you try to, as a male, you try to do all these things for years and years and years. And it's like, no matter how much self-improvement you fucking do, no one's ever going to fucking like come up to you and actually talk to you. You actually have to go out and deal with this, like fucking paralyzing fear of rejection. And I saw Jordan Peterson uh, do a video basically on this about something that, you know, women don't understand about men is that like, they really do not want to get rejected by women because it's, it's just, it's fucking horrible. Um, and I see all these women all the time who are always insecure about their looks or insecure about uh, like all these things. And yet, you know, they constantly have sexual partners. They constantly have guys that are fawning over them. And it's like, oh, I'm not beautiful enough. Or, oh, I'm, you know, I'm slightly too heavy. And it's, it's just like, dude, you've had t over 20 sexual partners. That's the least you're and like, it's just, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, and here's where the incel come out and you have to be checked. You have a problem and you need to go fix that problem. As the life coach, I can't help you there. You need a therapist. But now that we are here, you put it out on the internet so you're looking for advice. Um, so no, because women, and this is also a problem. Women... I don't believe most women, because of the society we are in, kind of, in their mind, credit their ability to be good-looking or attractive or um, to get a partner in terms of sexual relationships. I think most women, probably shouldn't say most, but think about whether or not they want to be in relationship and how they can maintain a relationship. They're not running around here thinking, oh, I look good because people want to sleep with me. Mo a lot of people are trying to figure out what relationships will look like. So the fact that you think having sexual relationships with people somehow makes women feel like, and should make women feel like they are good and they have it and they're beautiful is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. And there is a kind of jealousy about women's access to sex in your mind that you have that needs to stop in a way like you can't be jealous of like how are you jealous of women <laughs> are you jealous of women <laughs> ability to have a <laughs> like I, I just how are you jealous of women's ability like here's the thing if you don't fundamentally like women if you don't fundamentally like women, I don't know how you don't understand how women could find that repellent, right? The idea that you are so disgusted with their ability to attract and your inability to do the same, it comes off. Like, before you even said this, I knew it was coming. I already watched this video, so this is not new. But before you even said it, when I initially watched the video, I knew this was coming. I can sense that there is a strong disdain, and I could be wrong, but there is a strong disdain or at least anger towards women. This anger is easily, easily vetted for. It is, e most women, as soon as you walk to them, can feel this anger. And that's probably why you're getting rejected. Like, what do you mean?
Talking to women is not difficult. It is not difficult. Wanting something from people, not just women, but this is why networking is difficult for me. I can make friends like that, but I don't like networking and I don't really network. I go out, I, if I like you, I don't talk to people I don't like. It is, <laughs> it is, if I don't fundamentally like you, I'm not about to try to hold a conversation with you. I don't care what you have. If I don't like the conversation, so I can not like you, but like the conversation so I can continue to have it, right? But if you don't fundamentally like something, it is hard to carry on that conversation. Also, if you want something, if the only reason you're going to someone is because you want something very specific from that person, yeah, it's going to be a little difficult for you to do that. Because somewhere deep in your psyche, I'm psychoanalyzing, it is what it is, I don't have the degree for it, but it is going to be a problem because deep in your soul, somewhere in, in, in that soul of yours, you know that you're only talking to this person because you want something from that person. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult for you. You probably, your spirit is probably not going to be at ease while you're talking to this person. It's probably going to be disjointed. I cannot tell you, I say this a lot, but I can't tell you how many times I've been at a bar where I saw a bunch of women, I get, bought them all a drink or bought two of them a drink, because if there's five of them, I'm buying all five of them. If it's two, I'll buy two. If it's one, I'll buy one. And I'll just move on about my business. No expectation. Nothing at all. They find me and talk. I will be walking away and they will stop me and say thank you and then start a conversation. I've opened the door for people and they stop to talk to me. I have pulled the chair out for people. They stop to talk to me. I've been not, like, just be nice. Literally, don't have expectations. Don't want things from people. Think about how you can give things to people and see how your world changes. Just think, like, actually, this is, this is men's night. I'm giving... <laughs> I'm giving advice to men. <laughs> I'm giving advice to men. You said I am not an alpha male at some point here, sir. It is in that that I realize that you are trying to perform for other men. Because nobody cares about no alpha male. And uh, no one in the real world cares about an alpha male. These men are lying to you. They're selling you a bag of goods. They don't care about you either, right? So here's what you do. Forget all of that. Forget being called a simp, forget being an alpha, forget being a beta, forget all of that. Just be you and be good. Hopefully the you you are being is a good person. Because <laughs> in that case, then don't be you. <laughs> if you're a bad person, naturally, girl, don't be... <laughs> girl, if you're a bad, toxic person, don't be you. It's fine. We good. <laughs> We're good on toxicity. But just be a good person. Just want to help. Forget trying to get in a relationship. I'm not even talking to him, girl. I don't care. I'm talking about for the men who are here. <laughs> I'm <not> like this. <laughs> girl, why am I like this? Just be a good person. That is it. That's all I got. Let's continue. Y'all need to pay me for that. Just <laughs> and they, they live in this, this whole reality. Like I, I could imagine if they if they had gone through like what I've been through, where it's like, hey, you, you really want to know what it's like to not have anyone care about you? Go for like seven years where you have absolutely zero affection from anyone whatsoever. Um, but but yeah, I basically this this just triggered this in me today because I saw this thing on Facebook that my friend posted. And she's she's an all right person. And we used to be really close, and it's not really relevant to that, but um, I'm, not, I'm not, like, bashing or anything, but she had posted something today that I thought was kind of, you know, silly, where it's like, I'm in a, here's what it says, um, I'm in a relationship with someone who makes me laugh like crazy, reassures me that I'm loved even in hard situations, continues and puts forth effort for me every day, and is my best friend in the world. It's crazy how I ever believed that anything less was good enough. Um, I, I just think of the contrast like that as a male, like, let's see, no one gives a fuck about me. Even if I do stuff, no one's going to give a fuck about me. If I do find someone who's going to like want to be in a relationship with me, they're probably going to be mentally abusive to me. Um, like my, the last person I tried to date was. And e even if that, you know, when I like wouldn't go for that, she like instantly found someone like right after that, who's, you know, willing to put up with it. And it's just like, you just get treated like fucking shit. And I can't even imagine. 
Ok. Vamos <risos> falar de <to> unpack. <risos> First of all, that's not true. They're, when you find your tribe, people do care. <laughs> this is so sad. You Now you all understand why I opened with the first video where the man is literally telling men who come to him that no one cares. People do and can care about you. This is really bad. This is actually really bad. The idea that you're walking around the world thinking because you are a man, no one cares about you. Look, I too am man. <laughs> I, gra, I too am man. I... <laughs> People care about me. I am if if people didn't care about me in my career, in my family, in life, friendship, on you like people care about me. And I am a man. If some if you have no one, if you have no one who cares about you, that is a problem. But I don't believe you. You are not looking hard enough to find the people who actually do care about you. You're in your feelings. And it's not true that because you're a man, no one cares about you. That is not true. You can find your tribe. Earlier, it didn't escape me that you said there are some women who were into you that you weren't into, which is fine. I'm not blaming you for this. But maybe also the kind of people you are trying to be in relationships with aren't the kinds of people, both sort of intimately and uh, platonically, right? aren't the kinds of people you should be in relationship with. <laughs> when, girl, why is my chair always squeaking? Uh, Y'all play too much. Like a fucking being in a relationship with a woman who like treats me right, and like I know that there would be women who would do that, but they're with other men, or they're with they're they're with other men because you know they're actually like good women. Um, like if you have like a decent personality and you aren't hideously ugly, you will find someone as a woman. In fact, you don't even have to find someone; they will find you. Yeah. I can't do this. I can't. Men need help. Men need help. This is the bad signal. I need some good men to start some YouTube channels. This ain't. This is not right. I'm not just talking about Brandon. I'm talking about why y'all have me calling this man Brandon when that's not his. What's his? I don't know this man's name. It's gonna be Brandon from here on. Y'all need to be combating because ain't no way you should be internalizing this message. Like, this is not true. Feria says, I want to say I'm only a fictional male worshiper. I only support awful men unconditionally when they don't exist. <laughs> Wait, are you giving Jada and, Jada and Tupac? <laughs> you play too much. Um, even John Wayne, Gracie had a FT shop and a family. Look. Oh, it's giving gothic, sexy vampire a love it theme. Thank you. Um, Cardi and Redfield podcasts have destroyed young men. <laughs> they have. Tell that man he is. <laughs> tell that man he is. <laughs> Wait. Someone said leave Jada out of this. Send him the hotline. The thing is, it's. I feel like I could be of better use to these men. Because what is happening online is not right. I can't do it because, girl, they're going to tell me I'm a fruitcake. But, y'all, we need to find some men who can do this. Ain't no way. There's literally zero reason why men should be online believing this foolishness. Oh, someone said, um, I'm not going to say your names. I'm just going to call you L. Um, 
sent five dollars. She said, "For the loneliness, the insult pipeline is wild." Oh, oh, it's twelve. Oh, twelve. You're beautiful. Girl, let me see now picture. <laughs> um, Curly Full says for schooling these men on how to socialize. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I do not like YouTube taking anything from this, but whatever. And you know, I just think you know, people and like like women live in this like fucking world where because society loves and cares about them because they're specifically women. And then on top of this, they, they think that they have like some unique sense of de- sense of de- oppression where, you know, there's a 21 workplace death gap where men are dying at 20 times the rate. Men are committing suicide at four times the rate. Men make up over 90% of the prisoners. They're three and a half times more likely to die of homicide. And because, you know, men are involved in some of these things, it's, it's basically like, oh, well, men are causing their own problems. So we don't, we don't get. Okay. Separating. We should care. We should, but men are. Co- what do you want women to do when men are, are are analyzing each other? Like for real, for real though. What should women do with, to stop men from analyzing each other? What should women do to stop men from analyzing themselves? Like, a women like you're saying because men are involved in some of this. No, that's the problem. Most of this men are involved in. That's the problem. So that is that is the problem. You can't be mad at women because men are doing all of this. And why there is such a focus on women is because women aren't doing it to themselves. Men are doing it to women. Like, well, he's upset, so he's not thinking straight. <laughs> Wait, you're getting blocked. Nope, you're getting blocked. I told y'all to stop. I'm not. Y'all have been making me laugh this entire time, and this is not okay. Girl, this is giving me something very specific. I would not want to be in that building. I promise you I wouldn't. It's giving me very it's giving me something very specific. So let me be nice in a way. Give a fuck about them. And that's assuming they even fucking acknowledge it because you know when people talk about like the violence against women act, it's like acted like women are like the, the main fucking victims of violence where they're absolutely fucking not. And I'm not saying that that's a good thing that like when women are victims of violence, but you know, if we're going to talk about it, you might, you should talk about the main victims at the. Women aren't the main victim of violence. This is correct. Men are at the hands of other men. And women, a separate group, are the victims of men. So while men are primarily being unalived and victimized by other men, this is very important and should be addressed, but women aren't the ones attacking men. Men are the ones attacking women and other men. That is the problem. Do you see the common denominator? I don't know much about algebra, but I do know. (laughs) None of this, by the way, is funny. I've been drinking. His anger about who his ang he is angry about who is getting harmed more. And that's you and interestingly, I don't have a problem with that. You can say men are getting harmed more and we need to prevent men from getting harmed. How we do that? Stop other men from harming men. It's not women. So you can't be mad at women for protecting themselves or wanting protection from men when they're being harmed overwhelmingly by men. Like, you don't do that. That doesn't make sense. If you're mad, be mad at men who are attacking other men. Women aren't attacking men, by and large. That's the problem. Women should do like Jada and give men a... (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm going to aspire to trying to be like Jada said, Tupac. <laughs> Give them something they can aspire to <laughs> and make sure to never make them need it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I almost spat my, my coffee out. And yes, I'm drinking coffee because I'm going to dance, dance, dance. Very fucking least if you're going to have the conversation. Um, but, it, you know, it just bothers me. Like, no one really gives a fuck. And the only way anyone's ever going to give a fuck about me is if I, like, go through the effort and deal with all these mental demons. And, by, by, you know, who knows whenever that's going to fucking be done. Um, so it just, it just kind of sucks because, you know, you're told all the time that men have all this privilege because, you know, there's a few men who have trampled over the rest of us and gotten to the top. You know, when people talk about gender imbalances, they're all like, oh, well, Robert Downey Jr. makes $10 million more than fucking Jennifer Lawrence or something. I'm using that as an arbitrary example. And it's not like, you know, when people don't want to talk about gender equality, they're not like, oh, men are killing themselves at four times the rate of women. And that's like in like a global or that's like a, like a societal over the entirety of society. It's not one wealthy person making X amount more money than another wealthy per person. So he doesn't understand the pay gap. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, a lot of us don't understand the pay gap, but sir, no, that's not what the pay gap is. Separately, um, I think there's a lot of focus, and there should be more focus on analyzing generally, and I think that is definitely important. Keep going. Um, you can hold two things at once, and I do think mental health around analyzing oneself is fundamentally important. So. I don't understand why you are juxtaposing that against women. Don't know. Please don't do that. <clears throat> um, and people don't understand that. And I, I get I get annoyed by all these women who always feel ugly or feel insecure despite infinite guys wanting to fuck them and be with them. When you get annoyed by women who feel ugly. Because men still would sleep with them. Okay, um, let me... Girl, I was going to reach out for an interview. <laughs> I want to reach out for an interview. I feel like... I, I, I have questions. I have... I have questions. And I don't feel like I can have answers without him to ask them to i have questions why do you get upset with women who feel ugly like why we know men will let me leave that alone i'm gonna reach out no y'all can't not gonna tell me nothing i'm gonna reach out to bradley and ask him let me let me see Okay, he has, let me, I'm going to ask. He has less subscribers than me, and that means that if I comment, it will pop up. Would you do an interview with me? Question. He's going to look at my channel and say no. <laughs> ah, I... I did it. Don't at me. Women can spot and ignore mental demons. We even overlook it. We just can't fight it for you because you, you'll say we're masculine. What more do you want from me? <laughs> Someone said, demons, no. <laughs> They're too late. I offered. No, I, I'm not even doing it on like trying to like show someone up i just i want to understand i why i only have one question so this is going to be a terrible interview why are you mad at women who feels ugly because men want to sleep with them does that negate how they feel because what i can tell you about you well let me leave that alone we can we'll do that later you know someone like me like someone said with all that privilege you're still whining no one said that <laughs> <laughs> like 
I'll, I'll have like literally no fucking female attention for like fucking years at a time and I'll have to go through like insane effort. And the only time I ever had a good amount of female attention was like for a brief time in my early 20s where I was actually like talking to girls regularly and then like, oh, girls see without you with other girls and then, and then they get into you too. And it's like, but, but I didn't really get anything out of it. And I mean, what, when I say didn't get anything out of it, I didn't get any long-term relationships. I didn't even get any short-term relationships. I got very little sex. Um, and mostly not from any of those girls actually that, that were into me. I, I could have had, I had money to go, you know, visit some of them who live farther away or just see the other ones that are closer on a regular basis. But considering I fucking had some shitty job that barely paid me enough. Um, but yeah, I'm. So there were women who were interested in you. You could have visited them, but you didn't because you couldn't afford to go visit them. And you were mad at them. Should they have visited you? But I thought you said your mom wouldn't let anyone in the house. So you live with your mom at the time. I don't know if you live there at the same. You lived with your mom who was strict, didn't allow people in the house. You had women interested in you, but they lived away from you. You couldn't afford to go to meet them, but you're upset. Like, I'm confused. Why are you upset? Like, I would be upset at a job. I would be upset at capitalism. I would be upset at the government. I would be upset at bus fare. I would be upset at tax fear. I would be upset at gas prices. I'd be upset at the car dealership. I would, like, there is a lot of things I would be upset about, but none of them would include the women who were ready and available to meet me, but I could not go because I do not have money. Like, I would be upset at a lot of things before I got to them. Based on what you just said, like, y these women seem to be into you based on your recollection. You couldn't afford to go meet them. Afford. The word afford is the... <laughs> you could not afford. Afford is the, the, the key word right now. Afford. <laughs> At least our usual kings have a sense of humor. <laughs> right? Girl, um, a period. He knows all the loopholes of a protective order. <laughs> Stop. Y'all gonna get me in trouble. Uh, putting out no effort and yet he is here crying. Right! Zero! No effort at all. He said, I'm here. Who is next? <laughs> he said, I am here. Who is next? You know what? I'm going to delete this comment. I'm going to delete this. I know why. I do actually, I deleted my comment. I do actually want to know, but there's a comment, I won't put it on the screen, but someone, one of you just corrected me in something. If there is something wrong with him for real, I might not want to get involved in that, um, even over the internet. Um, yeah, that's right. You are right. You are right. Thank you. And this is why you need black women in your life. <laughs> this, this, this is what this is why because like you 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 out here just doing 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 things and someone is stopping you like okay sir you didn't even think about this so I appreciate that I do actually appreciate that correction wasn't even thinking about that at all thank you uh someone get him a guitar and I because <laughs> tonight <laughs> wait no, I can't do it let me move on nope nope not singing that. I guess where I am in life right now is I'm, I'm trying to find, I, I wouldn't even say trying to find, because I don't even feel like I'm in a state where I could be in a relationship right now. And I, God forbid knows I fucking want to, because it's like, I have a low amount of time off at work. So at the very earliest, it would be next year. And I still have to finish restoring my foreskin. And I'm just, I'm apprehensive about going through the awkwardness of having that conversation again. Um, Girl. I, I didn't hear this before. I'm not going to replay it. I don't think I know what he's going to say. Um, 
I do actually really appreciate that correction, FYI, um, because I wasn't thinking about it. But more than not thinking about it and being kind of protected in that way, which I appreciate, I really do appreciate that comment. I won't put it on the screen, though. The fact that you all are so adamant about protecting the integrity of this platform is actually really beautiful to me, by the way. Like, I could... The way the comment was made, it wasn't even an attack. Or like, why were you doing this? It was very... Thank you. Like, I do... I wanted to take a step out of this foolishness that I'm doing right now to say thank you so much. And it wasn't just one comment. Um, it was a bunch of... I'm saying this right after he said something about something. <laughs> I'm just pretending like I didn't hear this man talk about what he just talked about. I'm just going to ignore it. Completely ignoring it. Yep, I'm definitely going to ignore it. Um, so, yeah. Thank you all. Um, yeah. Even though that's going well, I know it's still going to be another two or three years at least. Although, it has been going better lately. And I believe I'm finally a CI4. But it's... I don't know. It's just frustrating. And I, I can't even... Like, it's been so long... Um, besides my one long distance relationship, it's been so long without me being in a relationship. And I almost got into one in 2016, but it was just a matter of the, the girl was being so utterly toxic towards me. Like as much as I wanted to be in that, I just, I just could not fucking continue it. Um, I don't know if that would have subsided after a while. Maybe it would have, um, my, my other friend told me that and I was like, yeah, you know, I didn't really think of that, but, um, still, I don't think that's a good sign, right? When our relationship starts off and the other person's just being super manipulative and, <laughs> you getting blocked you're getting blocked and it is a, you're getting blocked i don't know why you put this in a super chat i no one said anything about this i didn't hear it i never heard any of this at all in the video i don't know why please someone <clears throat> moderator please block a lady please block a lady 747 <laughs> she getting blocked Ain't nobody, no one said that. Nobody said that. She's just making things up. She's just hearing things. <laughs> Someone get him a guitar and eyeliner. I don't know. It's, it's, it's frustrating, but like, so I, I'm trying to think about, you know, getting into a relationship or finding, start dating or trying to date next year. But it's like, I, I can't even imagine like what it's like to fucking be in a decent relationship. And that just, it's all these other people are just like moving on with their lives or moving on to like with, they have lots of money. And it's like the people I'm competing with now, I've always wanted, you know, to do this, but it's like, well, in high school, I wasn't the first one to ever get a car. I wasn't the first one to ever get like a part-time job. I wasn't the the ones dating in elementary and middle school. Um, and now that I have my own place, I have a little bit of extra money on the side. So you worried about the wrong things. And this is what will get y'all caught up. Go at your own pace. It is, oh, look, when I was in high school, if I, for a second, looked around and started comparing my economics to someone else's, I'd be depressed every day. Absolutely would be depressed. The fact that y'all, like, how are you still up here at 47? Look. <laughs> All right, you're not 47. How are you up here at 35 talking about how in high school you weren't the first to get a car, you weren't the first to get this, you were It don't matter. You're a grown man now. Like, okay, it does matter. Your therapist will tell you it matters. And you and your therapist can solve this issue. I am saying it is okay to not have been the first. It is okay to not have been the best. All you need to be is you. <laughs> All you need to be is you. Like, the fact that you're still holding on and you're comparing yourself and you're not, like, thinking about your own life and your own goals and what you want and you just, everything is comparatively done. Like, it's, I wasn't as good. I am not as attractive. I don't get as much. And it's like, are you happy? No. Then figure out what makes you happy and do it. Like, this is ridiculous. Go date.
<laughs> dating in elementary school is wild. <laughs> like, what do you mean? What is that? Who who does that? <laughs> Can black women connect him with Shamika, Keisha, Tara, Shawanda, Sabrina, Crystal, the fact that Crystal, Dorinda, Lisa, Felicia, Tanisha, Sharon, Monica, Monique, Christina, and Yolanda, period. I wish I could have wrapped it, but you know me. The fact that you sat there and wrote all of this out, you need an applaud. Someone said banish. <laughs> she should be banished. I have a full-time job that I've been at for three years. It's like, well, now I'm competing against people who are making six figures um, and have uh, had all the... Girl, who are you competing against? You're barely in the game. What are you What are you worried about people making six figures? Oh, my God, this is bizarre. The manosphere needs to stop. The manosphere, please, if you care about men, stop telling them about this high-value foolishness. Please stop doing it. Please, please stop. It is unhealthy. It is absolutely unhealthy. There are a lot of men who do not make six figures who are in happy, ha healthy relationship that they're actually probably going to mess up. <laughs> they're the ones who are probably going to mess those relationships up, statistically, right? So, like, you don't need to make six figures to be a productive, good member of society who have a good relationship. Why is this man up here crying about not making six figures and comparing himself, competing with men who make... Why? I mean, to be fair, I wish some of us would actually be competing with men who make six figures. <laughs> Let's be clear. <laughs> I wish mean, some of us were competing with other men. Like, let's be clear. I wish some of us were competing with other men. Like, for real, for real. But before you get to six figures, let's start at five. <laughs> let's get... <laughs> Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Absolutely not. <clears throat> You said you just got out of your mom's home, just got a place. You have a little bit of money to spare, and you're out here worried about men making six figures. You need to build first, sir. You need to you need to start slowly and and and, and slowly build <laughs> and slowly build up. Like I don't know what to tell you. This is definitely given entitlement, and that's the problem. Because ain't no way. Like, you can't be mad at people who've worked hard. Like, you literally said you wish someone had told you that you should be more social, that you should get a job, that you should invest in yourself more. So what it means to me is that you didn't do any of that. So you are mad at people who invested in themselves. Absolutely not. No, you don't get to be mad at them. You do not get to be mad at them. You need to slowly build yourself up and you're on your own path. Now, if you would stop spreading toxicity and start focusing on yourself, then maybe we could get somewhere. But right now, it's a no, sir. I wish these men would take their higher pay and go frolic. They can outdo the joy of single women if only they acted like Jada. <laughs> Look, you could go frolic. <laughs> they could go frolic in a meadow <laughs> and enjoy the one, the cool breeze. <laughs> <clears throat> this experience dating for the past you know 20 years or whatever um you know my friends that i i promised my mother by the way that i would i see people like telling me that i need to give the skincare routine i told my mom that i would tell y'all where her website is and um how to order it um but i didn't tell her that i was gonna say this and i think i've said it before so let me say it again my face is not, <laughs> my face as if it's perfect. Some of my moderators met me in person. We met up and I got a pimple right there. You can see it there. Um, and like with my hair, where my hair grow, I'm going to get it lasered because it's a mess, right? So what you see online for some reason translates very well. It's not the case in real life. And so, like, 
I don't want to mislead people. And I use my mom's skincare product, but I also have a dermatologist. My mom used her skincare product, but she also have a dermatologist. So it's like, it's not a thing where like, oh, this is what I use. If you get it, like, and there is like a ton of water and then biology. So like, that's what I'm saying. And I don't want to like sort of misinform people um, around this. All right. Whew. <laughs> you want to know something as i was talking i knew one of y'all would say this i knew for a fact one of y'all would say this this man makes me want to lock my doors and turn on my backlight period <laughs> what? Basically, Seema said, what I got, you can't buy, period. No, what I got is not a lot, is what I'm saying. In real life, it, like, my, I don't believe it looks, like, I look at myself on here, and then in real life, and there's a drastic difference for me, in my mind, so per. I fucking used to play Magic with, we're literally millionaires now, and it's like, I don't know. It just, it fucking sucks. Um, and I'm not getting like super emotional over this, but it's like, it really is. I, I mean, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm being like outwardly so, but it really does. Like it, it gets exhausting and it's like, dude, I just, I don't know. I just, uh, and, I, and I guess again, like it bothers me because like women are always like, oh, where are all the fucking good men? Well, you know, w a lot of women don't really even give, you know, good dudes a chance. And I understand that. like evolutionary reasons for I said you're welcome for that and stuff but it's one thing to be like oh say this thing doesn't exist um because you're not interested in it well um so yeah I guess like it's just gonna be more working towards trying to improve and trying to be more attractive and actually getting over my fear of actually like being able to like ask a girl out or ask her for a number and that gets more complicated with shit like me too where it's like everything you do is basically considered harassment it's like there, there's no like concrete line with like whether I should be more. Okay. I am naturally suspicious of people who are like, everything I do can be categorized as me too. <laughs> what are you doing? No, for real. Let's talk about it. Let's talk, let's talk about what you're doing. <laughs> I need us to talk and have a conversation about what it is that you're doing that is me doing. Girl, no. Let me continue. Persistent with a girl, because a lot of girls will just like literally tell you no right away, but they want you to. What sometimes that that will mean try harder. There's no like concrete line. I'm not even talking about something like touching a girl unwantedly here, which is something I would never fucking do. Um, unless like I, by unwanted, I mean there's times where it's like. And this is something that like feminism doesn't understand in our current societal thinking of this is like, you know, sometimes there's like implied consent. Like it's like, and if someone stops something at some point, you know, you can you, you escalate a little bit. And then like, if someone's uncomfortable with that, they can fucking say so. And I've seen girls do this to me and it, vice versa. But it's only, it's only a bad thing when men do it. It's only a fucking horrible thing. You're only a fucking oppressive jackass when a male does it. If a girl comes up to me in mid or high school and fucking hits me in the balls over some stupid joke, that's not even sexual assault. Even if you do it in front of a teacher, like that's fucking fine. No, that is definitely assault, but it doesn't feel like you're arguing for women doing it to be assault, which it should and is, and you should be arguing for that. It sounds like you're arguing for what you do to not be assault, and that's the problem, sir. Girl, what do you mean implied consent? And you think you are the good guy. Because you are not the quote-unquote alpha does not make you the good guy. 
you should be arguing that women, and I do agree with this, we've had this debate, you should not be touching men either. Do not physically hit men, do not assault men, like none of that. No, absolutely not. I will not stand for that either. But you're not arguing for women to be held accountable. You're arguing that men shouldn't be held accountable. Go, what? This man makes me want to lock my... Oh, I read this. Thank you, Adventures of a Roadie. Uh, theme is we miss it. Stand up again. <laughs> you know, I will stand up as many times as y'all want me to stand up because I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. Let me... Is this Halloween stream getting scurred? It is a Halloween stream. <clears throat> I'm dressed up. Ready? I'm kidding. I'm not going to stand. Let me do it. Kidding. I wish I could show you the pants. Let me see. Nope. Can't show you the pants. Nope. That's too much work. I thought I could show you the pants, but I cannot. He's giving us so much to run from and nothing to run to. Period. And he don't know that. That's the problem. He does not know that. That he does not know. No, he does not. But, you know, if you're, you know, making out with a girl and you like, you know, you know, put your hand somewhere and it's like, oh, well, she didn't expressly consent to that. It's just stupid shit like that. And it's again, I don't fucking know. Like, I. Okay, you need a lesson in things. What do you mean that like, you're making out with someone? I'm assuming you don't know this person. Where's your hand going, sir? So <laughs> this seems so specific. So where's your hand going and why? So where is your hand going and why? 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 Hope this young emotional detach. <laughs> nope. Someone put uh, adventures in timeout immediately. <laughs> immediately. I'm, I'm trying to be a good dude, and I, you know, I don't even know. I don't even think that that's like the, the play anymore because it's clearly not fucking working. Like, you know, insanity's doing the same thing over and over and getting the same results. Um, Anyways, this kind of went off the rails, and I don't... Sir, no, that is not insanity. Insanity is absolutely not doing the same thing over and over and getting the same result. That is not, that is not insanity. That is literally expected. If you do the same thing and you get the same result, that is life. If you do the same thing and you expect a different result, now, now that might be insanity. Instead, it is not doing the same thing over and over and getting the same result. That that literally is expected. That is what we one would that <laughs> unless the circumstances under which you do the same thing changes, one would expect you should get the same. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing. I know he just messed messed up. I I'm I, I'm playing. It is the point her mother Stacy Star. <laughs> I am no doctor, but this sounds like a social disorder, maybe. That's kind of where I'm going. Yeah, he was trying to pull pull a quote out and he just messed it up. I don't know. Like I said, I'm just I'm just fucking upset. And it's it's not only the fact that I can't find anyone to date or find like, you know, someone like to at least like try to like get to know it's, it's that I don't even feel like I'm in the position to, um, and it fucking sucks. So, you know, that, that's like one of the things that I don't think when women are going off on their, uh, you know, oppressive rants about how fucking terrible it is to be a woman and all the terrible things, despite the fact that there's like infinite horrible things about being male, especially if you're not like in the top 1% of men. Um, 
I don't think women really appreciate like how good some of the things that they do. Well, you can choose not <laughs> leave that alone. Um, is it bad to be a man? I like being a man. Like I actually do like, I don't know. I mean, I guess I don't know what it's like to be a woman, so I can. I don't know if I would like being a woman more than I like being a man, but I do like being... Like, is that what the problem is? Some of these men don't like being men? Because he kept going back to the top 1%. He kept going to the um, high-value man thing. He kept comparing himself to other men. And that's sad. To not see yourself... I, I do think, fundamentally, it is sad to not see yourself as <clears throat> to not be able to see yourself as valuable and important and see that your life has meaning um because you are not quote unquote a high value man or in the top whatever percent uh, it is and it's sad because like even though red pill is aimed at dragging women and a lot of these men do watch red pill content and they enjoy dragging women I think subconsciously, no, very consciously, it is seeping in that they are not the men that these men promote. It is an interesting reality. And I think we are going to be reviewing um, what social media and the manosphere has done to men. Like, obviously, it's toxic for women, but also for men, because I didn't even think about it from this perspective where it's... At some point, you are going to have to reckon with the fact that you are not Andrew Tate and you will never be. You will never have his amount of money. You will never have his amount of car. You will never be fresh and fit because of their money. You can be them physically and look better than them, but you won't be them in terms of the amount of clout and money they have. Maybe now because they, you know what, but... You won't be these men who talk and preach to you and get to degrade women and talk about how the top 1% of women, men don't want these women. Even if that is true, and the top 1% of men wouldn't want these women, you do. You do. And we know you do because you go to their OnlyFans and you pay them and you give money to them and you are upset and you watching them being berated while taking your money might be fun for a night, a week, a year, maybe even five. But at some point, you're going to wake up and look around that basement in your family home, and you're going to realize that you are the kind of man that they crap on on the back end by saying women only care about the 1% and the 1% get to do this and the 1% get to do that. You are not it. And it might not come to you now or tomorrow again, five years from now, but it will come to you. And you will realize and reckon with the reality that it is not you. You are not that guy. You will never be that guy. And instead of figuring a way to live well and be happy and find companionship and family and friendships, you were there dragging women and not building up your social skills. You were there buying courses to become high value men when it's not going to work. You were learning how to sleep with 50 women before you meet the one person and then you can't meet the one person. That's a problem. Like, that is a problem. Now you're just hopping on my stream. How dare you? I heard it was Halloween. Oh, wait, you have a, you have Halloween costume? Yeah. <laughs> A period. A period. I'm a lovable teddy bear. All right. Good night. No. Wait. Where you go? Wait. What? Petty. Not you just left. How dare you? You just randomly hopped up and then randomly hopped off. Ain't no way. That's it. The level of disrespect is beyond. The level, you have to come up here now and explain yourself. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. We not done. The conversation is not over. Let me. You gonna jump up and then jump off because you, you feel like it. (laughs) 
Wait, yo, I have to show y'all something. Cause Petty did wrong. Look what Petty did. Wait, did he do this? Let me show y'all this. <laughs> Why would you do this? Yeah, I left and then somebody texted me and they were like, he waited till you left to start talking smack. And I was like, nah, you got to say it to my face. You got to have that same energy. What is this? Let me show these people what you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a little meme I, I sent to the... <laughs> Girl, you're getting blocked. Right after this stream, you're getting blocked. Do you appreciate the meme? There is no ifs, ands, or buts. You are getting blocked, and that's just that on that. Like, what do you mean? What is this? It's our favorite couple. Um, couple goals, Jada and Will love and all that stuff. But I saw him in, uh, in Derek Jackson and Danea. I saw <laughs> Jada and Will. Um, this was my vision that I stole from someone. <laughs> I am tired. I am tired of you and the shenanigans. I think at this point, we, we, it's over. The podcast is over. We are good. Ain't no way. Um, let's read some super chats before we go. The HBIC 499. Thank you. I'm no doctor, but this sounds like a social disorder, maybe. Is that what it sounds like? <laughs> Hurry up and eat. All the men's are comparing themselves to women. <laughs> yes, he's a woman inside, jealous of other girls. We can't That's ignore true. that. We can't ignore that potential reality. Where are the white women to drink beer from his lips? <laughs> Sorry, that's not that funny, but that's funny. That is so funny. They don't have mango juice in white people land. That's a hard 35. Wait, he's 35? Lord, take the beard. Girl, I don't know that man's age. I just estimate his um, physical age based on how he looks. I need a warm, tight hug, Petty. Here's a hug for everyone. Never mind, because y'all, not everybody donated. So just for a row row. <laughs> This guy is really giving me Jeffrey Dahmer vibe. Uh, I mean, no comment. <laughs> no comment. I think he, he speaks for himself. All right. So since you're up here, we can talk about this. But did you, well, you didn't see this. JT came out. I Did you watch the BET Awards? Did anyone watch the BET Awards? I didn't. Is JT with uh, Uzi? Is that who that is? Yeah. Did Uzi come out as well? Come out. No, no, not that come out. She, they said she, you remember she threw her phone at little Uzi? Yeah, she threw her phone at little Uzi, um, attacked him, cursed him out or something. I don't know. I don't care. I do know and I do care. Um, so people were saying I Spice, um, I Spice call her boyfriend a munch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. They were saying that I, um, Lil Uzi was flirting with Ice Spice, and that, that's why JT was mad. So mm -hmm. JT wanted to clear it up, so she came out, and this is what she had to say. I got some of this from the Impressive Channel. Okay, so let me tell y'all why I threw my phone at Uzi, uh -oh. because for real. Okay, the reason I threw my phone at Uzi is because when we can't... When he... Let me just, uh, just say this. No sentence should start with the reason I threw my phone at someone. Ain't no way. <laughs> You're out of pocket. You're out of line. No, absolutely not. This is, this is not right. Unless you're Naomi Campbell. He had to perform. Mm -hmm. So we get in there and Uzi, and and baby, I'm so sorry when I say this. Uzi is like a frantic kid. Like he moves around a lot and he he plays like he is like play a lot. So when he got off stage, he came to me and he like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Give me like he was like, give me a kiss. And then I was like, I gave him a kiss. He was like, we finna go, let's go, let's go. And I'm like, what? The show just started like that. And then I had on this big ass dress. Mm -hmm. I had on a huge dress. 
So I'm thinking he leaving and about to send somebody back to come and get me. But when I get up, he down there with Bar sorry, Barry. He down there with chilling with Barry. And so happened. Who's Barry? His, his Barry. friend. Oh, his oh, oh, his okay, friend that he you. brought. It's like, oh, maybe um, not then. you should have made sure I had that seat. It was never about another artist because the artist is supposed to be there. It was never about that. It's about that you made sure that Barry was in his seat. Like he's sitting there, he's chilling like this when I when I walk up. Barry like they're like, yeah, jump sitting right well, here. Barry supposed to get up. Yeah, he must have got up and been no, written. You got up. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like absolutely. when I got down there, you supposed to check him as soon as I got down there. Like get up and let my girl sit down. You get what I'm trying to say? He acting like he drunk and delirious and he don't know what's going on and Barry. So I'm gonna turn up in his because he know like how I am because it got picked up and reported as like the whole ice spice situation. Yeah, I, I know, but I was I, like when and me and Uzi went back in the award show and he sat directly back next next to Ice Spice mm -hmm. and I sat where Barry was sitting, so it was never a problem. But people won't report that, right. yeah. and I. The All right. The point at which you have to fight and throw your phone at your man because he allows another man to sit in the seat that you are supposed to sit in, that is not your man, that is his. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is my opinion there. If you have to sit there and fight with your boyfriend because he has his friend who is male sitting in the seat that you're supposed to be sitting in. That is not your man anymore. She threw her phone. He called it. Called that screensaver. She threw her phone. He called it. Called that screensaver. Yeah, I removed him. Absolutely not. <laughs> Girl, what are you doing? Why well, she didn't just talk to him before she threw it? It sounded like she talked after. She was upset and she know he knows who she is. That is not an excuse, by the way. You need to take responsibility for your action. This does not sound good. You have no right to be throwing your phone at someone. The men are embarrassing and they have always been embarrassing. You don't get to throw your phone out there. And I don't believe your story. I don't believe, JT, that... Lil Uzi made a man sit in his spot, in her spot, and that she was mad because the man was sitting there. I think she he was flirting with Ice Spice and she got mad. Um, why are you fighting for the seat? Were you his plus one? Wait, was JT Lil Uzi's plus one? That don't make sense to me. That does not make sense to me. Um, is there a fight for space in his heart, too? I just put that there because whatever. So... I don't believe her. I don't believe any of this. But then, but then the man in question decided that he was going to speak out. And so this is what the man said. <clears throat> he posted the picture. This is the man in question, right? Asat Bari. This is, this is him, right? And he said, he ain't want you sitting there, dusty B word. She was really mad about Ice Spice, not about me. She called him a group because he was sitting next to her. B sold 6K talking about me. You're not about to convince me this is not... You're not about to convince me this man... Look, I can't say it, but like, for you to sit there as a friend of her boyfriend and come out and talk about her like that. Something else is up. Mm -mm, nope. Nope. You're not going to convince me. You, I believe every word she said now. I don't believe this was about an ice spice. It might have been. I don't care. It's about him. You're not going to convince me that. You're not going to convince me that she's lying now. I fully believe she was lying. 
fully believe she was lying. Didn't care. She could not convince me on her own that it was because of this man that her she threw a phone at her boyfriend. You going I'm going to think it's a, a woman. For you to come online and disparage her and talk to her and talk about her like this. Go what? Something is up. Mm -mm. Nope. Let that man. Let that man go, JT. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, but let that man go. What is your opinion? I'm looking for a meme I have for this very situation. It's about men who uh, talk about women online. <laughs> there is definitely something going on in my mind. Um, like this, though, like, even if you're upset, this is your, you said your homie, this is your friend's girlfriend. And maybe she's looking for an out, right? Where she's like, I can't be seen as jealous of another female rapper, a woman rapper, whatever. I can't be jealous of that. So you were there, Jabari. I'm just going to... Jabari. Um, ASAP Bari. I'm just going to go ahead and say, like, it was you. You were sitting in my seat, blah, blah, blah. Even if you didn't communicate to me first... I'm going to call you and I'm going to be angry at you privately for you to come out and shame her like that, even talking about her sales. Um, apparently, the City Girls had an album. They didn't know that. But for you to even come out and talk to her like that, mm, I'm sad eyeing this whole situation. A little Uzi has been a little oozing it up for a while now. And I've had my suspicion. <laughs> I have had my. Let me stop. Let me stop. And then little Uzi spoke up after all this mess. Yeah, you can tell he wears hats a lot because he has a tan line right there. <laughs> I don't know. If you have that tattoo, if I made that tattoo, I would want to show it off. So, why, who, who side do you think little Uzi is on? Um, the Uzi, First, did Uzi come out with a statement? Little Uzi posted on his Instagram. He's on Bari's side. Well, how you know? Men don't show up to support their girl online. <laughs> he he me all the all year. Let's not pretend. All right, period. Here we go. Wait, JD, come back and said, I can't read any of this. So, period. JT is out there fighting. I don't know the the day you are out there fighting with a man over your man. It's a problem. <laughs> when you are on, look. Look, I'm going to side with the 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 the, the um, LGBT community now. <clears throat> if you as a woman is out there fighting with a man over your man, it's a problem. I don't care what you say. He, she's fighting with him over little Uzi. It is what it is. That's how I interpret. The, the day you're fighting with a man over your man, it's a problem for everyone involved. <laughs> it is a problem for everyone involved. <laughs> So that's that on that. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't fight with a man over a man. As we know, there is a rise in lonely single men, and the research seems to suggest that they need to form better friendships. So I believe if you mm -hmm. are fighting with your man over a man, you should let them be together and to um strengthen their relationship that they seem to have. So a period. I agreed. Because <laughs> ain't no way. Hey, no, this don't look good. So little Uzi came out and said, my relationship isn't in the best shape. I just want to breathe. <laughs> if this is not the end of a relationship, I don't know what is. If, the, if this is not the end of a relationship, if JT sticks around after this, she's not a city girl. She is not what I think a city girl should be, based on what they told me they were. Did None Leslie of... um did Leslie say anything? Who? Leslie. I don't know who that is. Uh here, one sec. My relationship isn't in the best shape. I just want to breathe. What? How could you forget Leslie? <laughs> sing the song. You have to sing the song. <laughs> What's the song? Because tonight will be the night that I will fool for you. No. 
All right, period. So he not done though. <clears throat> he said, my relationship isn't in the best shape. I just want to breathe. Oop, I guess sometimes your boyfriend got a boyfriend to abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. JT and Uzi two bodies frolicking together hand in unloving hand when will they share their secret with Dr. Umar and Sukiyan <laughs> look girl the, 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 thank you Ferris this reminds me of the man who was mad his wife wanted to go on his yearly trip with his brother yep that's what it reminds me of too so he then goes on to say, I've been distant from everyone lately, even if they are standing right next to me. All right, girl, period. He could so, have been talking about Barry. Like, Barry was right beside him in that seat. Not Barry, for a while. Oh, he could be talking about his relationship with that guy, too. His relationship is on the rocks. He needs time to breathe. He could be talking about him. So I, I believe that. I do... However, I have something important to say. No, I don't. I don't have anything important to say. I'm just going to say this. Let that man go. Ain't no way. If this is like, I feel for JT. I do, actually. I feel for JT because I can't, I don't know what it's like, but I can imagine what it's like to want to like think you have someone but you don't really, and they're out here flirting with men, and, and, and I spice, I don't know. So it's like, that's one thing, but to like have that person be embarrassing you online and like announcing to the world when you are fighting for the relationship on The Breakfast Club that the relationship is on the rocks, it feels like it's time to go. And here's the thing, I feel like I don't believe... I don't believe most people know how to love uh, or like, I think most people want to control people um, and they wrap it up into love, men, women, everyone. But if you love someone for real, just let them go, right? When they go out in the world, if they find someone and they're happier with that person, like Uzi find Ice Spice or ba <laughs> Bari, and they're happier, let them be happy. They were not meant to be with you. If you let them go and they come back to you, just make sure the door is closed and they can't get in because they still weren't meant to be with you. They definitely, if they come back, they definitely weren't meant to be with you. Absolutely. They didn't They didn't choose you when y'all were together. Ain't no way they should be coming back. Lock that door tight. <laughs> Lock that door tight, close the door behind you, shut all communications, absolutely not. Nope, nope, nope. Do not let it come back. That is the devil. But I do think you should let people go. I do think so. This reminds me of a proverb from, um, all right, from Kevin Hart. Um, he said he was fighting with his girl and he stormed out. He was like, I'm sick of this. Boom. And he slammed the door and walked out. And then he was like, Keys. I left my keys, and he had to go back and knock on the door. And he was like, "Babe, my keys. I left my keys on the thing. Can you bring my keys off the thing?" So yeah, I think he should make sure the door is locked. I support it. Period. <laughs> so I'm going to move on because I I feel bad for JT, and I feel bad for you. The reality that needs to be said out loud. I feel bad for JT and I feel bad for your proverbs. But so I think Ebony Williams actually have these men. Ebony Williams tricked these men. And I do feel bad for these men. I do. I think because of Ebony Williams, because of Ebony K. Williams, men are out here being delusional. And the delusion has gone to the highest level it can go. And I do really feel bad. So if y'all forgot, this is what Ebony K. Williams said, and I think men took her seriously. I actually believe men took her seriously, and now we have problems. So here's what she said. It's like one minute, and then I'll show you why. The reality that needs to be said out loud is that as Black men age, their desirability increases. The reality that needs to be said out loud is that as black men age, their desirability increases. The reality that needs to be said out loud is that as black men age, their desirability increases. The reality that needs to be said out loud is that as black men age, 
their desirability increases. All right. All right. So here's the problem with that. The problem with that is Irv Gotti. <laughs> it ain't true. And sadly, Irv Gotti believed that it was true. And I believe, I believe that Ebony K. Williams single-handedly convinced Irv Gotti through that one video that as we age, our desirability increased. And so he did not know this was not true. So this is what Irv Gotti had to say. And this is what his experience was with his desirability increasing. This is what he did. I would love to have one with me 100%. Uh. I just don't think it's out there. For me, 26-year-old Dominican, gorgeous. You out here with Totones? Okay. So she asked me for 25000 Damn. She's a real one. Let's make some noise for her. <laughs> 25000 I was like, where does she get off asking me for 25000 And then in the back of my head, I'm like, this is the tip of the iceberg. Mm. If she's my girl, mm. that means she going to ask, I need a 100 mm. Her mess. To get all of this money from my family right. to have some bad come around and just start siphoning it out. That's mm -hmm. never happening, y'all. <laughs> so that's why I just, I don't think it's in the cards for me. Mm. I don't know if I could find someone who I'm going to be attracted to that's like a nice, good person. Right. And, you so know, you say you got your guard up all the time? You have to. Okay. Why? Why did Ebony K. Williams lie to these men? And I find this hugely problematic because it's like this man really out here really thought that at 53 years old, let me pull this up. Because <clears throat> this ain't right. And Ebony K. Williams need to be held accountable for it. How are you 53 years old, dating a 25-year-old? You said she was beautiful, body yada yada, all of that. You said she had all of that. Why do you think she was with you, sir? Because Ebony K lied to you and told you that as you age, your attractive level go up. What she failed to tell you is that it's because of your economics. It's not you don't actually get more attractive with age, you just hopefully get more money. And when you start dating people who are 25 years old, they're probably going to want something more than your attractiveness. Not only that, it is weird to me that you are out here talking about you want love while dating a 25-year-old. Like, what do you mean? And I'm not saying that all 25-year-old is just out here looking for your money, but like, mm, come on. What do you mean? I saw a meme from a guy online who said the rough thing about being in high school as a um, as a boy is competing for the girls with grown men who have houses and cars. Um, and I believe that a lot of jokes are based in truth. So I think he can't compete uh, at a level where women probably earn as much as he do, have as much education as he does or more. Um, I'm so working on my sound. Hold on. He had to go down to uh, level the playing field. Uh, I'm not sure why he was surprised. Um, now, what I did think you were going to show me um, when you said that you were you were showing some Ebony K. Williams, I thought you were going to show some data that showed like an uptick in bus driver applications over the last <laughs> month or two. That's what I thought we were going to see. Um, but no, it was just Irv Gotti. It is just Irv Gotti. And it's Irv Gotti complaining about women not liking him for him. So they like you for you and a hundred million dollars or however million dollars you have. Like, what do you mean? Irv Gotti is the same man who cheated on his wife. To be, let's be clear. I think I have this quote because he went on the Wendy Williams show and I don't just know this off the top of my head. I literally Googled him. And one of the first quotes came up was the fact that he was on Wendy Williams and he talked about how his wife caught him cheating. 
So what love are you looking for? Now you're 53 dating a 25 year old and they're asking you for $25,000. Cut the check. What do you mean? Like yeah, a, as I'm, she should. As she I, should. What is I, he? What else is he going to give her? <laughs> I am confused as to why he is confused that a 25 year old dating a 53 year old man would want $25,000 just because. What do you mean? And buy her her condo too. <laughs> right. I'm tired of these high value thoughts. Like this is a problem. Cause like these men are resenting women. Like they are. They're mad that women want them for their money. But like you want these young women. You are competing, as Petty just point out, with young men who do not have the kind of resources you have. Do you think that these women are going to these old men with ED for just just because they love them for for them? And they might. But that's not just what's happening. That's not what's like happening generally. They're coming to you because they think you have resource. And you know that because that's when you could get these women and that's how you are competing with these younger men. Now you're upset when you put the money in the ear and say, I got money, come to me, that they want the money that you offered because you offered the money. You know that the reason these women are coming to you is because you have money. Some of y'all don't. Most of y'all don't. But that's why they're coming to you. And that's why you're competing with the younger man. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? I don't know why they're acting brand new. Uh, Sh uh, Shonda already told them, you're you're a Lord Danbury. She was very <laughs> clear. <laughs> We're just waiting for you to die. Okay. Hi, Patty. <laughs> yeah, there is a woman now who said, I'm not about to divorce my husband. I don't want to be with him, but I'm not about to divorce him because he has one foot in and one foot out. And as terrible as I found it, I was like, girl, period. Like, no, I'm not going to say period. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not co-signing that. I am not co-signing that foolishness. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. Mm -mm. <laughs> so, yeah. So, now we get to promiscuity. And I want to talk about these two. And it's interesting. Oh, my God. I literally have a slide, like 20, 20 slides, 22 or 23 slides. And I'm confused as to why it's taking me three hours to get to get through all my slides. This doesn't make no, doesn't make no sense. Because you really don't want to go to the party. I know your MO. We all know. Mm. That's what it is. <laughs> Before I start, why are these men all talking? There was once upon a time, once upon a long, long time ago, men were the one who were lying on or keeping women secret and not telling people that they're dating. Now women, men are out here claiming women <laughs> that they that don't even look at them or breathe in their direction. And I don't understand what has changed. Please explain to me what has changed. Because something has fundamentally changed about like how men and women are interacting. And I don't know what it is. So, um, yeah, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Blueface went on somewhat, uh, Jason Lee, someone's podcast. And on that podcast, he revealed something that is very strange. Um I'm tired of these high value slots. I read that. Thank you. Irv Gotti bought Ashanti and Nelly together. Look, Irv Gotti talked about Ashanti once and I only wanted to hear it once. I was disgusted. Two times. Very disgusted. I was just about to say, where is the stats for that? Same. Uh, team, it's time out to appreciate Slay's beauty. Period. Uh, right. Thank you. Period. Not only is she beautiful, but she's very, very organized. She helped me a lot organize a get-together that we had, and it was so lovely, so amazing. I, I did very little work, and so I did appreciate her so much. Black women stepping in again. <laughs> um, so this is what... Is it, let me find where Blueface is talking. So this is what Blueface has to say. I'm not going to put it on the screen. I don't know whose channel I'm on, so I apologize. Let me see. B with the T. Someone named B with the T. 
You slept with Megan? Jason, I didn't say that. Take a look. You slept with Megan? Jason, I didn't say that. Look at me. Are you saying you slept with Megan Stein? Okay. I might have got some hit. Jason, like, double XL freshman, like, five years ago, like, BET Awards, like, I'm not. Sorry. This is his, in the interview, this is his fiat. This is his. Sorry. Can you imagine sitting beside, I don't even want to hear the full thing. I mean, it's going to play, but this is a fiancé. I'd be... How are you sitting there? The disrespect. The absolute disrespect. Like, how are you sitting there with your fiancé Talk Well, girl, why am I talking like this man care about a marriage or a fiancé? I was about to say, she don't... How, she don't even... She couldn't possibly care. She couldn't possibly care about anything he has to say all she no absolutely not no. so let me play because there's the megan the stallion one so i'm gonna play it because whatever and i refuse to I believe like that that happened <laughs> i couldn't even believe that this man went on the jet this guy don't know who this man is apparently he's a reality star don't care don't know don't want to know um he wanted to talk about Lori harvest so here's what he said uh you smash i'm probably gonna get some shit for this but Lori harvey oh Lori harvey it wasn't like a smash though like it was like i was really you know i was really like with her she was really with me but she would uber to like my place on the beach um and you know come out with me and stay with me some nights was it good Phenomenal. There's a special place in... Mm. No. That lady who decided to ask, was it good? We see each other. We see each other. That, mm -hmm. is, that is some thick, underhanded foolishness that you did just then. Like the men talking are a problem and they should be dragged. But to sit up there too and say, oh, was it good? Why would, Why are you adding that? Yeah, like, ad absolutely adding and making her feel even worse for her poor choices. <laughs> yeah, like I, the only secret men have ever kept was that they are the actual father. <laughs> <laughs> Away, carry up and eat your in timeout. <laughs> no, 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 you're definitely in timeout. Uh, his fiance look like nope, 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 mm -mm, nope. <laughs> I, I wish they leave Megan alone. They talk too much. Well, this is the part where we get into um, s shaming because I think we have to understand that this is not new, right? And earlier we were talking about how the the conversation around men needing help, it's not tired, it's not any of that. It can be true and it can be meaningful. But the people you are turning to, this is a, like you cannot turn to people who have literally just gained some right, some political move. Um to engage, like we're talking about, there's an article that I had to go into the, the New York Times archive, uh, and then I found it online. But in 1975, here it is, let me pull this up. In 1975, this article was written, um, it was under law, rape was at first a crime only against father's property, but that has changed, right? Right. And they were going through, I'm not going to read all of this. It is what it is. I'll send the article out at some, or something. What they were going through was the reality that even RAPE, trigger warning, wasn't um, an indignity against the woman. It was women were property of either their fathers or their husbands. Mm -hmm. And it, it watching the sort of historical transition from women just being property to very recently getting the right to vote to very recently being able to engage in academia in the same way to very recently being able, we're talking about World War II when women were 
forced into the, the economic economy and becoming like working members of uh, the social structure of the economy to realize how recent history or recent of a history this is. And for you to sit up here talking about women need to help men be better. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. As a man, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And Agreed. it's Go ahead. Your mic went out a little bit. It did. Is this, did it go out again? Is it sound okay? Yeah. Um, I was going to say agreed. And I think that's why that um, guy that you were playing <laughs> who was mad at everybody but himself, um, it's, it's like they still have that mindset of ownership, but we're way past that. You don't, you don't own us. <laughs> we don't owe you anything. We don't have to be there for you or any of that. So don't be mad. Just step up or be by yourself. Like it is what it is. Yeah. Like just step up is right. We look at the Cleary Court and I was just trying to give a rough estimate in recent history. This is 1948. The court found that Michigan legislature in enacting a statute could have determined that allowing women to bartend could give rise to moral and social problems against which it may devise preventative measures. So Michigan, by the way, created a law that prevented women from being bartenders. And the court said, yeah, that's fine. Like in 1957, this was the first time women, women were given the right to serve on federal juries, right? And it was like, even in 1973, like in the 1970s, early 1970s, the states did not follow suit. So we're talking about very recent history where women did not have the right to engage. We're not even getting into Roe v. Wade because that's the most obvious mm -hmm. example. Um, in, 1950, in 1974, the Senate passed the Equal, uh, Equal Credit Opportunity Act, which made it illegal to discriminate against someone based on their gender, race, religion, and national origin. Mind you, they would literally prevent women from accessing credit card credit generally if they weren't married and if their mm -hmm. husbands weren't a particular status. They didn't care about the woman themselves. So the idea that this is very recent history, that women should slow their progress down to help some lonely men is absolutely ridiculous. I do believe men need help. I do actually believe that. But they need therapy, and they need help from other men. They need better communication skills. We all need to come together on this. We are not looking to women telling them that they need to slow down their progress so men can catch up. What do you mean? No, <laughs> no. And they're waiting for us to build something for them because we've been doing that for the longest time. Uh, building the bear, as I like to say, right? So yeah. we have stopped and now they're like, I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with myself. We have, we put together conferences and retreats and all kinds of stuff so that we can help each other as women especially black women. I mean, just the Exodus Summit and, and watching Alicia participate in that um, and what we have been able to do in such a short amount of time, that summit's only been going on for three or four years. Um, give me a break. We, we, we are literally not here to fix you. Not anymore. Yes. And the conversation the manosphere could be such a good and positive place for men. Why do y'all focus so much time on women? Like, I am sure there is an aspect of the manosphere that has to deal with relationships because that's how human nature is. But there is an individual problem. When you say men are opting out of the job market, when you say men are opting out of school, when you say men are opting out of life, right, that feels like something you can address outside of women. It feels like you can address this without talking about and to women. And you all are not willing to do that. Not only are you not willing to do that, the men are willing to watch. Because Fresh and Fit said they were about finance and fitness and girl wear. None. Not, not even close. 
because the only way they got the viewership was to have to pay those women to be there so that they could um, undermine them and demean them publicly. That's how they make yeah. their money. Not not encouraging. <laughs> encouraging what? <laughs> okay, period. Let me let Petty respond if he has anything and we'll go into the after show. Because, girl, I'm late, late. But let's go. If you think about it, being, even if women were to do as the studies seem to be suggesting and start throwing themselves to the altar for the men, doesn't it feel like they're already sort of doing that when you look at the research and it says, oh, men don't have friends until they get married. And then their wife becomes their social network and their emotional support and their gateway to friends and community. Um, that doesn't seem to be doing anything, does it? So how can you say in the research, women are already doing this, women need to, and then imply women need to do this. Um, it feels like it's not working, so. Exactly, period. Lori Harvey, um, Will Smith equal having their harem sign NDAs. And this one slipped through the cracks. Right, Th that's how one... we know it's a lie, because I'm sure her NDAs are ironclad. He's lying. Right. <laughs> I just, I, I, like, why are you looking for this kind of club? Also, wouldn't that mess up your brand if you're now in Hollywood and you're, like, talking about all the people? Like, no one, look, I'm just, mm -mm. to be fair, apparently people were saying he was gay. And so to, to, to prevent gay rumors, he's like, oh, I slept with Lori Harvey. Well, we, we, we already know what the, that does. <laughs> like, gay, if a gay man was with Lori Harvey, they wouldn't It is what it is. Let's go into the after. <laughs> All right. So, starting next month, there will be some changes to the live stream. They'll be they're good. We're going to be giving away gifts. Um financial gifts, right? For the month of November and December, we're going to be playing games, giveaways, all of that. So I'm excited. Um, next week, we're going to announce um, the sign-up sheet for Thanksgiving and our giveaway for Thanksgiving, where we're going to be sponsoring um, some families uh, for their Thanksgiving meals and things like that. So I'm very, very excited for next month in particular. We will be putting forward the next debate topic on Sunday. I apologize. I got really busy last Sunday, so we didn't do it for this Sunday, but we'll do it for next Sunday, so I apologize for that. Um, so thank you all for the support, and hopefully we go into the holiday season with a lot of excitement, and this will ultimately be a good thing. So um, I'm excited. Um, we are my cash app comments. Were my cash app comments appropriate? Wait, I didn't... Inappropriate. <laughs> they were fine. They were... Oh. Did you have extra? <laughs> Can I buy petty beer? Can I buy pet, buy a petty beer? Petty yes, beer. Yes, a petty beer. <laughs> <laughs> they are free because they are <laughs> rusty and dusty and corrupt. <laughs> they are free. We're giving... We will pay you to get it. We will pay you... To, to get it. <laughs> Don't talk about my son. Petty's my son. Because I, I have sent him plenty of super chats to get a bed frame and pick up trash. <laughs> Ask him if he got any of them. He did not. <laughs> for the, um, <laughs> Lemons Meat Parker says, for this is a test. It's me, Curry. Thank you. Um, for he needs to find his white Nicki Minaj. <gasps> Wait, no. Um, Naj sent twenty dollars. She said for Thanksgiving giveaway. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This is how we're gonna be doing it too on Cash App. We're gonna be giving away on Cash App. So I appreciate that. Um, and then. Me Never Count says, uh, this is, oh, hey, OG says, where he's hiding the weapons. Y'all play too much. All right, I think I got through all of them. Thank you all. I, Tony, 
Oh, this was for the test. Thank you all. I appreciate that. All right. So that's next month. Um, and then December, we'll do the same. Hopefully, it'll be a lot better. But I'm pretty, pretty excited. So let's do this. We'll have more instructions for you next next week. Um, before I go, do I have time? There is a man online named Coleman Hughes that I really, really disagreed with. I had so many issues when I just started YouTube. And I haven't gone back to his channel. Problem. I now, I'm not apologizing, but I am now more in alignment with him than I ever was before. And I didn't realize, I, di I didn't change politically, but the way in which I think about individuals now has changed a lot, like a lot, a lot. Like I was the system, system person. So if I'm speaking to an individual on an individual basis, I would tell that person, be the best you can be. Here's how you do whatever, whatever, right? But on, in public, I generally think that I would talk about the systems, mm -hmm. right? But because I came online and I see the kind of blame the system approach only, and I've really delved deep into sort of my own personal issues and how I have struggled and been able to do certain things, um, I do believe in the capacity of individuals, even in a broken system. And so because of that, uh, I have actually had to sort of admit some of my views politically have shifted. Mm -hmm. The one that has not shifted is this one right here. So I'm saying I like and appreciate him now. I can watch his channel and I've evolved a lot, I think. However, I think he's dead wrong here. So let's watch this and then we go. America, I view as a very complicated an independent problem. I don't think that you can say slavery and Jim Crow are the reason why there are you know, X percent, maybe 20 percent, uh, uh, whatever the poverty rate is currently in, in the black community, that that's why it is. You know, everyone who's, every black person who's poor is poor because of slavery and Jim Crow. I mean, I, I do not believe that at all. I think, um, Every single human being, every single American has a story of why they're situated where they are situated that has a lot to do with themselves and their parents, has a lot to do with the, a lot to do with the hands that their, their, their parents were dealt. The problem of intergenerational poverty in America, I view as a very complicated. All right. If you turned him up, please turn it back down now because I'm back. The problem of intergenerational poverty, he said, is complicated. Agree. Then he goes on to say, I don't believe every single black person is where they are in terms of poverty um, because of slavery and Jim Crow. Nobody said that. A straw man, if I've ever heard one. No one. I'm going to do, he, did, he has a debate that he did, and I'm going to review that as a standalone video. I promise I'll get it next month. But the fact that you made that straw man when I know you are way smarter than that is ridiculous to me. No one is saying that everyone, every black person in poverty is there because of slavery, but we are talking about the impact of slavery and Jim Crow on people and their ability to succeed in a system. If you believe, and he just said this, that it's based on their family or their parents, well, who were the appearance? And who were the appearance? And who were the appearance? And we don't have to go back that far to get to redlining and Jim Crow. So what do you mean? Like, that don't make sense. And this is a clip. He made this clip. So if I'm taking him out of context, then girl, go find me the context. But he posted this clip and I'm reacting to it. This is absolutely ridiculous. It is not a good argument. I think he knows it's not a good... Well, he don't because he clipped it and put it out there. So he thinks it's a good argument. He is against reparation. And for the life of me, I don't know why. Do you think he's on par with the post-traumatic slave syndrome? I I don't I think I think he's one of those people who will make big claims but then in a 
conversation, he will kind of pull back and say, of course, slavery has an impact. Of course, mm-hmm. segregation had an impact. Of course, mentally and the way we've taught people based on how we've been taught in slavery and Jim Crow, that inferiority complex is an issue that stemmed from slavery. Of course, being forced into economically depressed areas will have an impact on your access to education, food, clothing, and shelter. Of course. But to what extent he's going to make that um, a staple of his argument, he not, he's not about to do that. So he's going to diminish that kind of role and say, it doesn't affect everyone in the same way. We don't care. No one said that. Of course, even people at the back of the class, if they crushed a piece of paper and threw it at a bin in the front of the class, some of them will make it in that bin, while some of the people at the front will miss in that bin. So it is not the fact of the existence of or non-existence of privilege. It just means the people who made it, who didn't have the kind of privilege that we think people, other people have, they were exceptional. And there are some people with privilege who just gonna fail because they just can't. It is what it is. Like, right. You can't look at the outcomes and say, yeah, no, there are some black people who are doing well. So what is what is racism? No, that's not how you do the analysis. And I know he knows that because I've seen him debate on other topics. I don't know why this is so hard for him. Interesting. Yes, I want to see you analyze the full video. Mm. I I would love... Yeah, bring him over. This is one of the few people that I have gained respect for while being on YouTube. Where I thought, I don't like this person. He is... um, a bi- he's, a, he's a partisan hack. Um, he's like Candace Owens. He's nothing like Candace Owens. <laughs> and after kind of really watching him and doing my own evolution, I can say that I've grown to respect him tremendously. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I have grown to respect him a lot. I think he's thoughtful. I think he's smart. But we disagree on this reparations thing. And also, he thinks we should take the colorblind approach, which is the video that I'm going to Yeah, we're going to have a problem. So, But I do agree with him on a lot of things now. And I do appreciate him. Bring him over. Let's debate. Yeah, well, I will call him over. But yeah, <laughs> Sober Bubba was the one who was like, you need to go look at him. But um, I do actually, I think he is a, he's a smart guy. All right. Yeah, <laughs> the chat's dragging him. The chat has all of y'all, every single one of y'all are going to uh, YouTube jail. <laughs> you got to serve your sentence. Um, you've been out of pocket, out of line, period. And period. <laughs> Funny enough, one of the biggest videos that I've ever made when I was at 500 subscribers was when I was telling him he was wrong, when he <laughs> used... Um, immigrants, black immigrants doing well to say racism didn't exist. Or it didn't yeah. affect people in the same way. Yeah. I don't know if that video is still up somewhere, but it's either in my membership or there. It is one of the videos that I dragged him in. Um, I don't feel sorry for that video. I still stand by it, but I do understand his point now. He's still wrong. Still dead. <laughs> I understand yeah. you, but you're wrong. <laughs> yep. Anywho, have a wonderful night, everyone. See you on IG. (laughs) Bye. Bye.